Yours. Welcome, Summerland, BC, Canada. Okay. Thank you for oh, coming. Yeah, BC. <laughs> when Trevor was on board last year when we did ONC, we did like a Canadian geography lesson. Oh, oh nice. Because to me, I, everything was just Canada. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm I am in them? no position to offer any Canadian geography lessons. And <laughs> I was, new there's to the, the territories, area. and then there's like yeah, totally. And then I was like, I figured out what side what things were on, which was important because yep. I cou couldn't tell you before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I did get I a lot that. of like, I did learn a lot of things That's I did not know before. Yeah. I couldn't there's name all lot. the states in the same way I couldn't name all the, the provinces. Provinces. There you go. Um, and territories. Raj. Um, but, but, yeah. Yeah, I learned something. Cool. I think I can do the coast of Canada pretty well. It's the middle areas that really get. I get Manitoba and Saskatchewan backwards yeah. sometimes in an embarrassing fashion. But <laughs> I've only been there like a year and a half, and I have never lived in either of those provinces. So I'm trying. I'd like the to go to Canada. Are like more than just the port in BC. Because we weren't allowed out. You, you have friends in Canada I now. I know. I know. you got to get in yourself the, a home. The best place. Oh, no. The island. The island. It's amazing. You Which should go. The Vancouver Island, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the place. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. It's because that's where me and Trevor are. I'll visit there, and then I'll go see Hannaford in Newfoundland. Oh, yeah. Newfoundland. And that's the other great place. Oh, Newfoundland yeah. is amazing. I think he's in Labrador. Uh, now. Labrador. Yeah, I want to. I I wish I can hear Mike say it when I hear it in my head. Like, do you know what I mean? I hear the yeah. when I hear the word, I'm like, I only hear his voice saying yeah, it. Yeah, totally. Did anyone uh, give us an estimated time that we be traveling blue? Forty-four minutes. There you have it. We're at fifteen, uh, roughly fifteen hundred meters now. We're going at twenty-seven hundred meters and we're at we're going approximately 30 meters a minute i'm about to slow down though because i'm coming up on a okay. flange sounds good um not that fast. this seems like an opportune time for me to do a little walkthrough of what we're going to do today huh yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah that sounds great uh video can i get high pack out Are you? I'm going the other direction. Sorry, my bad. I was just about to tell you that my brain was backwards. Oh, okay. That's fine. My you see what I missed? Uh, I, yeah. Raj. Disregard. It's okay. All righty. Are we looking here? Mm, uh, no. no. <laughs> Raj. Are we, are we on a weird salvo, maybe? High pack survey. PC1? PC2? Ugh. Let's just keep trying them, yeah. No. Yeah, hey, that works. Yeah. So, currently, we're down here. This is Herc, this little uh, crosshairs. We're right next to Herc in the boat. You can't see it because it's tiny. Um, and we're going to sort of meander uh, this a direction up to the top of what I believe is a guillot here. Yeah. So it's going to flatten out pretty significantly above us. Uh, and we're going to trace on the outside here of this little ridge. And then we're going to come up to a nice flat spot and check out whatever's on the top. And then we're going to keep tracing the ridge up like this. It's going to get quite steep in here, which will be really interesting. That's generally where we see quite a lot of critters. Uh, and then we'll probably do a little little lateral along that and then come up to this ridge here once it starts to level out and we'll top out at waypoint 10 here uh, which is <coughs> at approximately 1500 meters so we are starting at 2,793 meters, and we are climbing up to 1,500 meters. So overall, close to a 1,200 meter gain up this feature here. And hopefully we see a lot of really fun, cool things. Pretty excited. And hopefully we collect a lot of rocks. I'm feeling good about this. 
I would like more sparse branchers. <laughs> <laughs> Says sparse brancher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm off SPL. Hold on. Welcome, Massachusetts. Happy to have you here. Welcome to Nautilus Live. I don't think we did. There was, it was a little bit of maybe not the right. Has anyone ever seen anything out at sea that you couldn't explain? I think Remember we that time that I tried lot. to explain mermaid fingers? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I feel like so many things out there. <laughs> Literally every day. Yeah. Oh, uh, Raj. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> like, how do you explain a jumping, swimming an enemy? You don't. You just don't. Somebody will, though. <laughs> now that we have video and samples, somebody's going to figure it True. out. True. It sounds like make-believe. Yeah, it like does. You're just lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you? I'm going to log it. I just, you know, the deep sea is full of these ancient creatures. They don't have faces. They have, like, the original body plan. And somehow they're still like very sensory in tune with what's around them and they're moving around and they're doing stuff and I think that's pretty crazy <coughs> Nia someone gives you a compliment they say beautiful contour mapping is the seafloor data gathered through, I don't know, LIDAR? LIDAR. LIDAR. Uh, yeah, LIDAR. Sorry, what was, was that a question? Um, they really want to know what is the density points that are gathered with your mapping. Our resolution? Um, these, the images that we're looking at on HiPAC are 100 meter resolution. I'm glad I wrote it down. Um, we can, depending on water depth, we can get a lot tighter resolution than that, but being uh, in nearly 4,000 meters, that's about the tightest grid we can, we can reliably collect. Um, and we don't use LiDAR, we use sonar, but there are some pretty cool shallow water mapping gigs that use both sonar and LiDAR, uh, and LiDAR can actually penetrate into water to a, a depth threshold, which I'm I don't know off the top of my head because that's uh, not the type of mapping that I have done in my career, but you can go out and you can do coastline LIDAR surveys and then look into the shallows uh, and then you can pull that into a point cloud with bathymetry data, which is the data that we collect out here, and you can make like a seamless point cloud data set that comes up the coast and then into the water and then sort of down off of the shelf a little bit, uh, which is pretty cool. Nice. Welcome, Missouri. Thank you for tuning in to Nautilus Live. LIDAR is much more regularly used for, for mapping on land. Yeah. With, with airplanes or aerial or drones, people use LIDAR to do mapping there, but not as much in the ocean, just sound is much more efficient for yeah. traveling. Sound travels 25 times faster in the water, I believe. Sound is so cool. Is that right? Yeah, Raj. We have a question, um, Mia, maybe you can answer it. They'd like to know what's the difference between topography of the ocean um, that they can see on Google Earth and the mapping you're doing right now. Oh, that's a great question. So if you look at Google Earth, there will be places in the ocean that are sort of a soft, rounded texture. And then there will be places that seem to be much higher resolution 
um, and have a lot more detail in the features. And those places that have more detail are our mapping data. Uh, so we integrate all of our data into the base map that Google Earth uses through uh, NCEI and uh, Lamont Doherty, which they, they do a GMRT grid, um, which is sort of the master map of the Raj. ocean. Um, and the rest of that, the rest of that, those, those smooth areas are altimetry data. So those are, boy, how best to explain. Uh, those are a, yeah, calculated. I saw that go back up. Average Meg. based on where seawater is actually like piling up. So if you have a seamount, it's going to have a slightly higher gravitational pull because it's very dense and has a larger mass underneath it. And the ocean will actually pool above it slightly. And you can see that from space. Uh, so we can go out and we can look at satellite imagery of the ocean and we can see where there are these mounds of water versus where the water is a little bit lower. Uh, and, and they estimate where seamounts are and what their depths are based on that information. Uh, and then a lot of times, once they get actual mapping data over it, they'll replace that. And you will see like a much higher resolution space in Google Earth. Um, and, and those estimations based on altimetry are not the most reliable. Uh, they're great for for estimating, but they are not reliable for like actual depths. Like we often get out to an unmapped seamount and we look at it and it is, you know, we, we've got it a, as much shallower from altimetry data than it turns out to be in reality. So it's, it's a, a great tool, um, but does not necessarily replace mapping. Mm -hmm. And does the sonar impact the sea creatures? Uh, it can. There are sea creatures that use sonar, that like dolphins. Mm -hmm. um, they tend to actually, I mean, they, they come up to the boat and they'll swim on the bow wake and they seem to almost enjoy it. I'm not mm -hmm. sure what their relationship is with it. There is a lot of discussion of how sonar affects marine mammals. And we have marine mammal protocol, so we will turn our sonars off or turn them down when we're in a certain proximity to marine mammals mm -hmm. for their safety. Um, but sometimes, I mean, it, it seems, at least with the dolphins, as though they, you know, they'll seek it out, uh, which is sort of interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. I bet it depends on the frequency, too. Absolutely. So, like, lower frequency stuff is going to be high energy and potentially like it could be low enough frequency that it could like damage tissue but like that's pretty extreme whereas like high frequency you might even be speaking in the dolphins like like sort of linguistic range mm -hmm. it just sounds like somebody speaking gibberish to them someone <laughs> singing to them from far off yeah depends yeah. on how much power is in the sound seismic what kind of is a much bigger yeah. uh issue when it comes to marine life seismic is like you, you could, when you do seismic mapping you actually like explode things underwater and create really loud low frequency sounds and we don't do that on nautilus um it's pretty fun though it's <laughs> super cool it's really really neat have to you do. done seismic surveys mm -hmm. i have not it's super neat and you can see kilometers down That's into cool. the seabed hmm. there's a really good um website and books back. called um if you go to dosits.org D O S I T. I'm going to start. Uh, you can learn more about the science of underwater sound, and it's pretty accessible. And they've got books that you can get for, um, like digital books that kind of walk through different sounds and animals, people making sound, all the different um, ways that sound exists underwater. That's some interesting information. Okay, ROV pilots. Which kitchen utensil would be the most helpful if it were attached to the ROV? A knife. <laughs> <laughs> she was ready. <laughs> Isn't there a dive knife on the vehicle? 
Yeah, there's many <laughs> knives. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. Wow. Great question, Doug, from nice. Virginia. You Thank can you for never have in. enough knives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I hope it's not that. <laughs> I'd like to keep that. Ugh, I like all those things. <laughs> Crossbow. Raj. Okay. But if you turn off mezzo, yeah, because they're like touchy, yeah. 1934 meters depth. Oh wait, it's going back on, going up. But everything's on. Um, this is a pretty good question. They say, does your organization and team mentor students in any capacity? Uh, that would relate to our um, internships, right? Wait, uh, can you repeat the question? I didn't quite hear you. Uh, does your organization and team mentor students in any capacity? Ah. What came to mind is the internships that yeah. are offered. Yeah? Yeah, the, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Please. <laughs> After you, <laughs> I insist. I'll do this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you had to it. yeah we definitely have a lot of internships, but for the moment, um, our pilots are troubleshooting a few things, so maybe we can get back to that question in a minute, but we have a lot of educational opportunities, both on the ship and from home including internships, fellowships, and many resources on the website.
think we have a question that kind of goes back to um, the sounds and the. It was they were saying, is there some kind of regulation or code of honor for what acoustic frequency are used for different uses underwater, similar to radio waves in the air? Uh, I'm personally not familiar with the radio um, like guidelines mm -hmm. or code, but there is. I mean, we. Uh, we have a marine mammal protocol that is sort of administered by NOAA. Uh, they come up with the kind of best practice, and we follow that. And I'm not sure what oversight there is if you're not working on a... Like, if you were to, to be on a private industry vessel, I don't know if there is legal oversight for that. Um, there are... That they are required to have marine mammal observers. So people will come out and they will stand to watch like up on the bridge or outside and they will look for marine mammals. Um, and if one is seen, there is a protocol that is triggered by that. Mm. So I think short answer is yes, there is a code and I'm not sure what the level of enforcement is with it. Got yeah, it. there's um, there are several different federal laws, the Endangered Species Act, the Marine Mammal Protection Act, and the National Environmental Policy Act, that all aim to set guidelines about frequency and amplitude. I think it can be difficult to fully monitor, but yeah, there are definitely laws to. Uh, minimize uh, the effects that sound has on marine life. We wish your daughter the best in the mentorship program. Definitely check out the website and hope all the best for her career path. I guess I'm going to go through each of these again and wait longer. I'll let you guys know when I'm going to turn off something big. Um, Argus HD first. I know, it's a bummer. What's that? No. No. <laughs> oh my god. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Let's just both be, yeah, just trying to keep things, yeah, you can come down faster. Let's see. I'm, yeah, I'm going 29 down. Butt cams down. Okay. 
I'm going to take down IP power, which is going to take down two cameras on two utility cameras. That's in internal to the bottle. Okay, roger that. I'm slowing down just a little bit because I keep creeping ahead of you. Okay, IP power coming back up. Yeah, I I see what you see. Utility cam coming down. Thank you. Dash cam. Do you all think that is it possible for large undiscovered sea creatures to be in the ocean? Yes. That's yeah. why we're here. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Anything Especially if it's the size of a monster truck rally. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be scared? Oh, yeah, I'd be super scared. <laughs> <laughs> I think be, we'd be more scared if we were actually inside her. I don't think, I think I would, I think I would be that scared, at least at first. <laughs> like when I first saw whatever the thing was, <laughs> my first reaction would be like that level of scared. <laughs> then I think I would be able to like, you know, sort of pull it together. But like I get, I feel very like, this, these screens are my eyeballs. <laughs> it's like a virtual yeah. reality. Kind yeah, of thing. very much. It's very immersive. Becoming the cyborg. <laughs> so we are down cams. I know we've caught giant squid using like flashing circular light sets. Is there any way that like a vehicle would would it scare a giant squid away, or is it like we just have to be in the right place at the right time? Do we know? I think it can be, um, yeah, quite, I mean, we know Herc is quite loud and brings a lot of lights and it, so I imagine that would not be a very stealth way to come upon creatures who are not used to that. There yeah. are, um, I mean, this isn't really necessarily for large creatures, but Mesobot is an example of a, of a vehicle that is very stealth in the water and can um, explore the midwater without much disruption of the environment. So very quiet, without lights, using sensors that aren't um, supposed to really disrupt the environment. But I think a lot of people who study large animals like whales are observing them from the sea surface yeah. more than bringing vehicles into the big blue midwater looking around. It can be very time consuming with not a lot of uh, success. I know a few years ago, I don't remember Stop who it was zone. now, but they created like a, a circular light array that flashed in these patterns and it had a camera in it. They were able to like lure the giant squid in with mm. it and like get, like that. I think that was the first time they got like photo evidence in the ocean, not of one that had washed up somewhere. Um, but uh, I that was probably pretty quiet, I would assume. So I don't know. I don't know what our odds are like, but pretty mm. giant. Can somebody? <laughs> anybody got numbers on that? 
Thank you. Our data logger is on it. <laughs> Googling right now for you. Thank you. Uh, I got 59 eight. feet. What? The, I am seeing despite that, that is actually 43 feet. Yes, I see it. Yes. So we'll Wait. go with between 43 and 59 feet. <laughs> Pretty wild image of one on a beach. So like, Kylie, yes, um, Bob says also you were right with the fast updating vendor. It still takes. It's slow. It's still slow to update. It's just updating with not right numbers, I guess. Even though it's fast, it's slow. Yeah, so I'm waiting um, a minute at each sensor. Roger. So Meadow's like coming back up. 15 meter long. You okay with crossbow coming down? Am I okay with uh, what poking around? Crossbow. Crossbow, yes, yes, yes. How was the guillot formed? Uh, is it by erosion or a volcano? imploding on itself. <laughs> Who wants to take that one? Not me. Are you, you, you want to take it, Amber? Sure. I just didn't want to talk over anybody. Go Aww. for it. Birthday it's girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's your time to shine. So a geo is first formed usually by volcanic eruptions like most of the sea mounts. But then what happens is it breaks the surface of the waves and is then eroded. And that's how you get sort of that flat top. Okay. Our targeted depth is 2,800 meters. Sounds good. sub-bottom sub now. Thank you for tuning in, Canada. We have a question about, um, is it only the Pacific Ocean that the Nautilus explores, or does it explore... So bottom coming back on? Many others. Altimeter going down. At the moment, uh, the Nautilus is based in the Pacific, and we will be for quite a while. Um, but back in 2015, Nautilus went through the Panama Canal from having done works for several years in the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico, and previously before that in the Mediterranean. So um, yeah, usually we stick around a general region for quite a while and then move to another area if there's other work and research and exploration that, that we wanna be working on. But in addition to Nautilus, we also have a mobile system that um, is fairly new and can be moved to ships of opportunity in different locations. So that'll be something coming uh, more online, I believe, in the next Altimeter back up. few years. Tilt coming down. Um, yeah, once, yeah, once, uh, once we've gone through everything, that's a great idea.
Oh, there it is. Tilt motor. I'm turning tilt motor back on. Oops, sorry guys. That just gave me heart failure. <laughs> Was that your phone alarm? Yep, it's tilt motor. Welcome to Nautilus Live Chicago. Uh, they have a question. How old on average is the Guillaume or Seamont range? And it is it water just the basalt or the metamorphic features? Um, the camera so, on is as down. far as we are aware, no metamorphic features here. But we're not sure about the age of all these seamounts. Many of them are Cretaceous in age, ranging anywhere from 90 to 65 secure. million years old. Does the guillot have a filling or a dressing? I have no idea what that means. What does that Neither mean? Do I. <laughs> I need clarification on that question. Can you repeat the question? Uh, they asked if a guillot, the unnamed guillot, have a filling or a dressing. The entire <laughs> science team is <laughs> stumped. <laughs> <laughs> a filling. Um, hmm. Does the unnamed guillot have a filling or dressing? Is that like what what kind of like geologic donuts? material it is made of? Perhaps. I have no idea. Well, it's volcanic in origin, as Amber was discussing earlier. But there's also a lot of uh, sediment deposited on top of that. So I, perhaps. I like is this like a juice or sauce question? <laughs> <laughs> Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they were talking about salads. Yeah, me too. I was we're talking that about <laughs> I know, no, I know, but I when I I heard it like the second time around, and that's when I was like, oh. Thank you for tuning in, Scotland. Welcome to Nautilus Live. Yeah. You got it. Okay. I see bottom. Nice. Excellent. Where? Um, on the sub bottom. Ah. <laughs> Raj. <Rouch. laughs> if I see Ar if I see bottom with Argus, we got a problem. <laughs> oh, I was like, oh. I mean.
welcome, Tim. Thank you for tuning in. That's the other vehicle. Um, this is a three-week expedition, so we've been on the ship for, uh, this is our second week. Is it? We didn't have ice cream, so there was no <laughs> Sunday. so well, how we are we telling candy. time? We had delicious Snickers and Twix and... No, you don't want to bring up the ice cream. Ice cream is the only way to tell oh, so, time so here. <laughs> have it every Sunday, and there was no more. Oh, I'm so so who knows how long we've been out there? Could be days, months, a year already. Oh, no. How would we know? <laughs> the salad ran out. Wait, sorry, Kelly, what were you saying? Thank you, Sean, from Ontario, Canada. Happy to have you here. I'm starting to get Doppler. Ooh. Um, what's up? Um, okay. Okay, I don't know. Let's troubleshoot that after Sorry. we get to the bottom. Yeah, I agree. Interesting. Very interesting. What is the most hilarious thing you've seen while on a dive? Hmm. Hilarious. Yeah, hilarious. Um, I think we're going to duck stop. off of SPL for a few minutes while we get uh, sorted out. I am all stop at okay. 50. I can I can keep talking, but I won't I won't be listening. I think. Well, I haven't had any hilarious um, thing thing. Lots of mesmerizing and cool creatures, but nothing hilarious. Yeah, because I'm going to start backing down. And then uh, what's... Yeah, I'm not yeah, sure about that, our, but um, we are just getting close to reaching the bottom, heading? so uh, we're, we're going to let our like operations zero one zero. team uh, zero one zero? Okay. get ready to I'm going to come around to counterclockwise. So stay with us. I think that'll take your 68 okay. wrap out. Does that make sense? I'm going to come around to counterclockwise as soon as I get sort of underneath. Oh, you. Ooh, neat. Hello, friend. 
Hello. Wow. Oh, looks like a mango. <laughs> it it does look like a mango. A kind of flat mango. <laughs> like, you know, when you get the strips. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Mm. I, I see now. Uh, we are currently stationary. Uh, our heading is 170, and we will be moving at a bearing of 013 when we do start moving. I'm happy. We can start to go down. Raj. Bottoms in sight on Herc. Oh, yeah. I need to get better about using that sonar. It's a good sonar. Okay. Uh, you can come down a little further. I'm still eight meters off the bottom, and we've... I'll just keep going. It's actually, I think it's pretty steep here. This doesn't really look it. I see rocks and a holothurian. Okay. Okay, that's great. Um, do you want to do video? Are you ready for a white balance? Okay, I'm back in on SPL here. Great. Were you able to identify the ground fault or? Yeah. Yes, I was. It's okay. in the, we, yeah, we isolated it to the tilt motor on Argus. Gotcha. Any concerns about that or? No, nope. fine. It's, okay. We we ran with it just fine. Perfect. Um, yeah, it'll be, it won't be a problem. Um, you can also run a DVL reset anytime You're you ready? want. Ready? Yep. Okay. I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Yep. Ready for blue button. Yeah, I am. Uh, go ahead and turn on that blue button. Okay, blue's on. Okay, let me know when you're ready for the craft valve. I'm ready for the craft valve. Roger. You got it. Okay. You want to hold still for a second? Let me make sure yeah. all the lights are on, because if they're not, that would be a huge part of our problem here. You want to turn porch on? Yeah. Ooh. Ooh, super hot. OK. Uh, I mean, is that all right, Ryan? Yeah, I actually need porch light off for the Oh, back. sure, OK. And lasers off, please. Roger. Um, maybe up or something. Where are the lights? Um, okay. Hold on one second. Dave just said we could actually turn porch light on. You want, he wants it on? Yeah. Okay. Ooh. How's that? All right, let's try. 
There you go, that's nice. Yep. I'm halted. Okay. Alrighty, perfect, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna cap the cameras real quick. Gabby, just so you know. Roger. Nap, just to check, we have master position set to DVL now? Sure do. Okay, awesome. I don't see any camera creep. Yeah, it's not so bad. Okay, I'm all set with white balance, thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Okay, I'm halted. What okay, is this ready for in front of us? Yes. Okay, craft valve off. You can turn blue button off. Blue button off. Okay, housekeeping is complete. Great. All right. So, um, let's get moving towards waypoint two. Um, it looks like we're pretty steep, so maybe we can do this in steps. Yep. Uh, did you have a speed and distance you wanted to start with? Um, if the pilots are okay with going point to 20 meter steps, it seems Sounds good to reasonable. Me. Roger. Sounds it looks like uh, the bridge just put in a heading change. They did, yeah. 181. They've, we're they've been struggling a little bit, or? Um, I mean, a little bit, I think. I called in and asked Alexi about it, and he didn't seem to think so, but I have okay. been seeing a little... A little okay. like little spots of drift, so just keep an eye on it. I see a rock. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get the moves going. All right, sounds good. And what is that on the Bridge, sea floor? Now. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I guess let's go take a look. In, but could be wrong. Can we get a zoom on that? Yeah. Putting some coins in the zoom bank. Go or for zoom. Taking could them be out. many of blobby things. Oh. It's kind of unusual looking. Yeah. What is that? An ice Perhaps. Perhaps. Yeah. Looks kind of gelatinous. Oh no. Hey Lexi, could we step two zero meters bearing three five six? Wow. Hmm. I'm not really sure what that is actually. Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure at all. Cool. Uh, our guard bearing is gonna be three five six. Three five six, Roger. Okay, go for zoom again. Still getting tugs a little bit here. Can we get the lasers in view? Yeah. Oh, oh so he's tiny. Quite small. I was gonna say he's pretty big. big <laughs> yeah, I he's big enough. I don't want him like crawling around like out from under my fridge or something. That's <laughs> he's ten centimeters. Yeah, that's very understandable. That's a solidly big, creepy crawly. <laughs> hmm. You guys have what you need there? Yep, we're yep. all set. Okay, go wide. And uh, somebody in the back, I'm ready for, um, you guys can switch monitor one back to what you want. Perfect, all right, switching. Oh, it's centering. What if you tried centering on Argus again? Yeah. That worked well, I think. Let's do that. I feel like the best cue I have for when the ship starts to do something other than what it should is like when this little gray. Yeah, yeah when that's the, it's my favorite one. Up. For sure. Am I still tugging on you? Yeah, Steve's yeah. okay. saying it's a oh. okay, I'll come back type home. of blind lobster. 
I'm just getting like excited. Homer yawn. excited, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, it's all right. So we have an ID for that. So that was exciting. a polycalid blind lobster. Sometimes they bury in the sediment to hide. I don't know if I've ever seen one of those before. Oh, I haven't. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Okay, I think that we might be getting to a point where you can set your um, head to, what three is five it, zero six. one? No, is it 356? Three, 356. Three, I thought it was zero one three. It was, but it changed. It okay. was, yeah. And we're gonna come out just a little bit this way before we go that way because we don't have um, recently mapped or contour okay. data Great. over to the right there. Sorry, um, I missed that cue. It's okay. You were doing things and being sciency again. The zoom that was during the zoom. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. Hey, pilots, can you confirm if the still cam is on? It is. Okay. Thank you. Four uh, K is not. I don't think. Do you want it? Um, yeah, I, I, I sure. The, you can have the power. Okay. You've got it. Gauges look good, by the way. Sweet. Yes. What is that little floating critter? Sure. Down Could you be more bottom. specific? He's down here. That's oh. probably up at the top, sure. though. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> oh, you mean the bottom of the ocean? <laughs> <laughs> no, there was also something floating by okay. right as I said it, oh, okay. but floating really in front of Herc. Maybe a shrimp of some kind. Or one of those fish with Ooh, the yeah. go for zoom. So the rat tail or something. Oh. Oh, it's way smaller than that, isn't it? It's like tiny. Could it be like a larval rat tail, maybe? I don't maybe. know. Maybe. A little you baby rat it. tail. I don't know if that's a thing. <laughs> it's just floating along. A benthic polywog. It's going to be hard to get zooms. I'm yeah. still tugging on Argus. Um, that's okay. Okay, I'm going to go wide. I'm just going to get to where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> Instead of off chasing dreams. <coughs> yeah, chasing sorry about tails. that. Over I'm the a bit horizon. Of a That another thing to look at. Video, can you um, change the iris on and an anemone? Can you also a go for zoom video? Sorry. Okay. A little do the bit zoom of, first. Can you do all of the above? <laughs> we'll you came with extra hands, right? Ooh, so pretty. Ooh, oh, yeah. Yeah. What is this guy? Do we know about it? I feel like we might have seen one of these the other day. If he's the same like as the other day, he would be a halosaur. Ah, that will do it. We were zoomed all the way in. Pretty cool tail. Is the tilt off? Yeah, I had it on for a second, though, so okay. I could tilt up. Roger. Ooh, Steve Go has it. It is it is definitely a halosaur. Excellent. I was like, why is the visibility so bad? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, man, this is going to be a bummer. I was like, I can't even see the tether. <laughs> like, I can't see anything. <laughs> and it was just zoomed? Well, because we pushed past the like lens flare, but... Um, it has oh, been the zoom sticking. is sticky. Yeah. yeah, so it must have just creeped when we were in blue water and we wouldn't have noticed. Must be anemones or urchins in the background. 
right by the lasers. <clears throat> Steve had a little fun fact. There's two primary genera of halosaurs that can be identified by the presence or absence of scales on their heads. The huh. Aldrovandia lack scales <laughs> and allow you to see the brain through the skull. That's very fun. They're weird. Hmm. Okay, I think we should bring this back to SPL because that <laughs> sounds great. Tell us about your own Baloma songs, Kylie. <laughs> no, no, no. Sing, sing for you later off SPL. Uh, I did my tree beard voice. Do we have a move in now? Uh, we're just finishing up this step, it looks like. Uh, right. And I will call in another bridge, Nev. <laughs> yeah. Could we step two zero meters bearing three, five, six? <laughs> So a sea pen, a sea cucumber, a halosaur, <laughs> and an anemone? I can't really tell. I'm just saying. Cool. Pulling on me. Rats. Pulling on me. Rats. I just want to go <laughs> zoom on stuff. We got to wait for the ship to move Would and then you, you can have all the up? zoom. <laughs> no. <laughs> tell Nia. I don't have control of my speed. We're going <laughs> slow. We're going backwards and uphill. We're going backwards? <gasps> oh, but what the ship if that's is? another yeah. Serianthus? We have to be careful. Go for Ooh. zoom. Yeah, that's a good point. We do have to be careful. <laughs> well, it's just a sea Not that one. <laughs> sea pen. That's a sea pen. <laughs> that's a sea pen. Okay, what else do we have here? Down just below. further. There we go. Oh, I feel like this is our old friend, hey? That's what <laughs> we were thinking. Be. We'll see. Do you want to jump? <laughs> jump for us? Can you jump. zoom? Jump. That sea pen was a pro prototop till day. We can poke it. Look at this like tube. Wow. Ooh. This looks like, uh, oh. Is that its base? I really want to get a better zoom, but I'm stretched out right now. That's okay. I will get one. We're yeah. going that direction. Yeah, we're coming. Some scientists Bless ashore. You. Jeremy Horowitz says this would be an excellent habitat to find. Let's get right orange thing. You see it? In between the Where's sea pen that? and the in between. Oh the yeah, I do see that. To the left now is of the sea pen and the anemone. Yeah, can oh, we get a zoom yeah. on the that? speck? Yeah, it's, um, it's a floating speck. Go oh. for zoom. Oh, it was bright orange. I dare you to focus on this. Oh, <laughs> oh or is it a laser? Is, is it a <laughs> lens flare? No. Oh my no, god. No, it's not. It's just we just gotta get it in focus. But it's itty bitty and it's moving. This is a big okay. challenge. Okay. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh! Oh. Beautiful job, Ryan. Ryan, incredible. great job. Guys, Impressive. What is this little creature? Is it a speck? <laughs> that is very interesting. It's a who. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> it's real cute. He's coming so closer. Cute. So tiny. Oh He's swimming so hard. 
from the genus dot and the species <laughs> spec. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I want to look at big yeah, stuff. We're, we're good. <laughs> we're good on that. Thank you. <laughs> you see Steve down there being like, uh, guys. <laughs> no. Are we able to no, get? That was not on the dive plan. <laughs> are we able to, able to keep moving, or are we still Yeah, waiting? weird. Um, everything's moving. We're just sort of oh, waiting great. on it. Um, and just looking at what's closest, I guess. There's well. a fish up off to the right, just out of oh, view. Oh, the halosaur? Yes. OK. This oh, one? Yeah. Don't know if he's a different one or if he is the same one. And, and the then a sea cucumber. Yep. And something's floating behind it. Oh, yes, there is. Nice. down a little bit yeah. three meters or something yeah sometimes I'm surprised like the tether can look very slack and still be still have an influence yeah okay push in a little bit more it's better see his thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He's thinking he wants out. He's doing something wow. pretty crazy. What are you doing there, bunny? Acrobatic. So this is how the flip ship <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking came as if it goes inspired vertical. biomimicry. Does it think we can oh, see? Oh okay, no. go by. Goodbye. <laughs> I don't blame you, buddy. Do you think the holosaur inspired the flip ship? <laughs> I don't think so, but <laughs> I'll, uh, we can we can imagine it. So we'll try to anticipate as quickly as possible if we want to do any sampling. But we're really looking out for for rocks in this area. Go for zoom. Floating holothurian. Oh, we're also okay, rocks. we're not Got going it. hugely fast because of the way the ship is oriented currently, so we might have Perfect. a little bit more more time to yeah. Okay, we're excellent. Very cool. That was He's beautiful. Fun fun to sediment. Watch. Wow. Just walking off his Great last meal. It's <laughs> <laughs> pretty amazing. Could we step two zero meters bearing three five seven? Quite mesmerizing. Yeah, yeah, very beautiful propulsion. <laughs> okay, go on. What is this again? A holothurian. Mm. Oh, it looks so different. It's like a sea cucumber. H O L O T H U R I A N. Brittle star taking off. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh, Go for zoom. And a sea pen. Oh, crab. Oh, it's crab. a crab. Oh. Nice. Does it. Oh, look at that shell. Wow. Isn't that yeah. really cool? Yeah. A little further? I'm all the way. Maybe in. if you can get it. Oh, okay. I'll get closer. Sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> He's like, no, you won't. You're gonna have to chase me. Oh, I see that sediment moving. I run away. Is it a crab or like a her hermit crab? Because it looks like his. <laughs> oh. <laughs> True crab. Okay, I'm gonna have to go wide and find a new <laughs> direction here. Sort of made a mess. Oh, do we want to zoom on this sea pen? Sure. Okay, We've go got a zoom. moment. Yeah. 
Great. Thank okay. you. Go wide. What is that big white thing? Oh, there, that looks like a fish. Yeah, you can see an Argus pretty well. Oh, yeah. Oh. Nice. Go yeah, zoom. Ooh, what oh. do we have here? Ooh. <laughs> I love those eyes. He's smiling. Uh-huh. It sort looks of like a, a grimace. Way, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not a smile I would want to meet. What did you just valley. do? <laughs> a Halloween smile? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He does look like he belongs oh, look in the at nightwear before Christmas. Do we yeah. have any more coins in the Zoom bank for those teeth? We're, we're zooming. I'm all the way in. Yeah. Aww. This is this is very zoomed. Look at Whoa. that eye. Those are quite sharp little teethies. That eye is like Tim Burton. Gems. Wow. Oh. <gasps> I like this this fish. Let's see if we can get an idea. Bathysaurus. Bathysaurus? Is that it? It feels yes. like a very appropriate name. Yeah, that makes sense. Apparently, they usually orient upslope, so this guy is backwards. Another oh flipper. No. Sorry, buddy. Oh. <laughs> Maybe he'll orient himself oh, the right look. way then. Nice. It's a dramatic exit. <laughs> not happy about this, and I don't blame him. No, not happy at all. Go for zoom. Oh, nice. So I'll elegant. Him up just a little bit. Yeah. Such bright scales, That's so shiny. Nice. Oh, 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 sorry, oh. bud. Get oh. out of here. Wrong way. Um, you don't want to be in here. Um. <laughs> <laughs> don't let him go. Yeah, he's, he's It's not a good place for him. He cleared it. You can see him in Argus again. Yeah. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, what is this? Is that an anemone? Yeah, looks like looks it. Looks like it. Looks like it. Ooh. Oh. 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 Ooh. It is very upset at us. I keep ending up a little bit too low to get these zooms. Yeah. It's a bad habit. It's pretty <laughs> slopey. Yeah, it really is. Now, where did our rock outcrop go? I'm seeing quite a few things in the mesotech. Okay, yeah. I'll start chasing some rocks. Might be starboard there. Great. It's very tempting to chase critters, but yep. yes, I, I, w I want a rock before our watch. You got them coming up. You can see them in Argus. Yeah, you got them. Yep. We're like 15 oh. meters away. There's a rock. Oh my yep. goodness! That there we one go. clear, transparent holothurian we saw swimming. Headless chicken. Seriously. <laughs> That's not the scientific name for it, obviously, but yes. It's from our scientist ashore, Kenneth Sulak. All right, all these Just rocks go for, for a second. Very, very attached. And tilt's That's coming a off. Bunch of little critters, like little tiny ones. Yeah, there's a little. Is that a little crab? Yeah, I think so. You Looks can push like in it. Further. Yeah. Is that a carrier crab? I think he it's has got a an little anemone. It looks like there's an anemone. Oh, yeah. It's a little backpack. <laughs> Very cute. Okay, sorry, rocks. Zoom out. <laughs> yep. Let's yes. See. Come on, loose rocks, loose rocks. Okay, you can push in a little bit. Uh, okay, rocks, rocks, rocks. I changed my heading a little just to keep okay, you in picture. You. Hmm. Ooh, um, a nice view. There will be rocks off to yeah. the right, the I correct mean, direction. Yes. Too. I'm not seeing any like loose rocks. Not, here. Yeah, me neither. Yeah. Um, Can we look a little bit more to the right? I almost feel yeah, like there was we something we don't have a we ton saw. of like. Oh, that is not a rock. I think that's going to be a rock. Going. I, yeah, I thought that direction. was a rock for a second. That is another. That is a fish. <laughs> we cannot collect the fish. I mean. No, we are not collecting. We, we, we don't <laughs> need to do <laughs> and collect. <laughs> you can go for the zoom. Oh. He doesn't yeah. want us to get a zoom on his face. Bye. Come on, buddy. Send for your close-up. Not photo ready. So stretched out. Um, I'm going to change our heading to zero one zero. 
Okay. Zero or bearing, zero. excuse me. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, you, as long as you get it when you take tell the bridge. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I got gotcha. you. Whoa. What is this bridge, Nev? I know you're all the way in. Could we step two zero meters bearing zero one zero? And I'm all the way stretched out. I gave you t two more meters. That's all I got. Yeah, I know. Go wide. But well, that was a nice find. I yeah. thought he was a loose okay. rock just so sitting in I'm the sediment. So I'm going to head back over to where we really should be on our path. And Great. Because I don't see any loose rocks here. Yeah, we can short yeah, yeah. keep moving. It's really not the right direction. There's some rocks right in the center of Argus. Awesome. We'll oh, go there. They might be, right? they're covered in sediment. Oh, really. those are completely mm -hmm. covered in sediment. Yeah. yeah. And very attached. Same with the ones Thank you. further back there as well. Zero one zero, right? Zero one zero, Raj. Thank you. I'm never gonna stop saying Raj. I want everyone to know. Maybe you say <laughs> maybe like we need like a response though. Like you, you say Raj, I don't say Raj back. You say Raj, I say dodge. Something like that. <laughs> Raj dodge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what's your vector, Victor? What about hodgepodge? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like that. Raj, dodge. Dodge Raj. That makes me feel like I should dodge though. Well, <laughs> maybe you should. Like something's coming. <laughs> maybe you Could dab be. maybe you dab into it and you're like, dodge. <laughs> like dodge a cat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mean yeah, I'm into this. <laughs> what? Oh yeah. Nothing? We're just talking Is that a rock or is that a fish? Can we get a zoom on? Is that a rock? Yeah, is that know. a fish? Uh, it looks like a piece of glass. Yeah, it does. Can we get a zoom on that? Yes. Go for zoom. Oh, I would love to collect something Some like this. Man-made obsidian it, we've got it. here. Wow. Okay. I love it so much. I love sea glass. It's Where so did this come from? Um, the surface. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously, but <laughs> could it be one of those like glass buoys? Yeah. Oh, neat. Oh. That would be pretty cool. We had glass buoys. We're good on that. Thanks. Okay. Go wide. Uh, Amber, I'm not super sure like what their actual function is, but they're the type of thing that you always see on beach houses, where they're like these really beautiful mm. glass. Oh. I don't know if anyone. I think they're used as floats for fishing gear um, in like Japan, maybe. Oh, cool! Mm. I love that. Big style points. Yeah, they're beautiful. So I'm um, null for two for for rocks that I think I see that I want that are not rocks. It's your birthday, but it's not your rock day, apparently. Aww. Apparently. <laughs> I want a rock, too. I want Kylie to pick up a rock. I would <laughs> love to pick up a rock. We'll find a rock. We got a lot of slope to work with. It's getting we only down have the wire, 18 minutes. folks. Yeah. yeah, but we we got dinner early. I might get a rock then. Oh, yeah, that's true. Oh, that is very true. And we have our night watch. You can also poke some of the rocks over here just to see if they move, if you truly wanted to. I think we I all don't know have the good answer. feelings <laughs> about them, though. They look <laughs> very, very not nice. Uh, yeah, I think we should just keep moving and seeing if we can find any piles of them. So, are they? how are they doing with Ooh, holding Hall position Thurian. and doing the moves that they want? Oh, holothurian, an enemy. Ooh, cup coral? Or, or an enemy. enemy. Looks more yeah. like an enemy. Yeah. You can probably do longer moves to, I mean, I guess it's a moot point because we're about to. Escape. Also, C pin. Go for zoom. Nice. <laughs> no, I do not think this is one of our jumping friends. No, no. I wish. Oh, oh, oh. We're good on that. Thank you. Do you have what you need? Yes. yes. Go you said good on that. I thought you were talking about lounge saying, we'll get on that. Oh, <laughs> Raj. <laughs> Dodge. Oh, is there a brittle star on that C pin? Go for zoom. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. 
looks like it. Dancing one. Such a light color. Wow. Bridge, no? Could we step one zero meters bearing zero one zero? Go wide. All right, rocks. Give me a nice loose rock. Hmm. What is on top of here? Fish. 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 <laughs> this is a nice ledge. Yeah. No, Holothurian, oh. not oh. fish. Yeah. Really That's cool. That's a big one. Tilt coming on. What a pretty oh, purple. Wow. Yeah. Oh, wow. It seems like it has extra legs slash horns. Tilt coming off. Slash, what are they? Um. The, the spike-like things? Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, what looks like many, many tails. That's a good <laughs> zoom amount. Thank you. I can keep this. Um, just floating slowly through the water. What an interesting creature. That's a cool view from Argus. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Oh, wow. That's a great view. OK. I need a rock. <laughs> Sorry. OK. Go ahead. Gabby, Kylie, get me a rock. That was beautiful. We'll do our best. Is that a rock in port side Argus? Or is that another creature? That was another a creature. Raj, yeah. Raj, Raj. We've got our eyes peeled for you, Amber. Mm, I appreciate. Oh, can we get a zoom on the this little area right here, yeah, just to totally. see if those are loose? It looks like that. Looks like the, there's a little the wall there. is quite dark and not sedimented. I wonder if anything broke off. Go for zoom. That looks pretty in place to me. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can push in a little further. We'll look at this coral here. Or sponge or something. I have no idea. Maybe That's an hard. old sponge? Oh, yeah, a dead sponge. Yeah. OK, go away. All right. This whole area seems to be intact. Yeah. Yeah, I think we'll find more rocks as we move up slope, Amber. <laughs> I'm hoping for it. I'm seeing more holothurians than I am loose rocks. Are you sure you don't can't go just collect a holothurian? Just a quick one as we go no, by. I can't collect a holothurian. It seems like there might be some Get rocks you. on top of the um, I don't know. Go wide. Ledge we're looking at. Okay, I'll head up.
rock or an enemy? An enemy. An enemy. Uh, it's dimpled, but it's not rocks. Urchin. Oh. Spiky guy. I no long I have my doubts. I no longer have any idea what this is. <laughs> <laughs> Go for zoom. Is it a Venus flytrap? Wow. Is it? Oh, you might, it be, might right. be. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know. Oh, it's no. uh, I don't know. It's just a an enemy it's an anemone sort of thing with very long tentacles. Nice. Very and a shrimp. Title. Okay. Oh no, oh, we're what? burning up the dust. Are these like those little bones that we thought we saw yeah. before? Looks Quite like it. possible. I did have the tilt on, but it is off. Okay. It just isn't cleared yet. Sounds good. Uh, I'm going to hold our position unless someone wants a, a press forward. Sounds good. Can we Roger. look over to the right just yeah. a little bit more? Oh, yeah. Can we poke? Oh, too much. This. Okay. Kelly, you ready for some poking? I can poke. I know how to poke. Poke a rock for me. If I can't collect, I want Argus, not Argus, uh, Herc to touch one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It'll be my consolation prize. Blue light first, yes. That definitely looks possible, Raj. I can do blue. I'm not going to hold out my hope. <laughs> yeah. Okay, blue first. Blue's blue. coming on. Yep. It is on. Okay. You ready for craft help? I am. Okay. There you go. Okay. Oh, that's a good bit Sorry. of sediment over there. Oh, this is so <laughs> silty. Sorry. Oh, no, this man. is this is there's, just the way yeah, it is. There's this is no not good your way fault. around this. <laughs> oh. Oh, did he budge, no. or did I just? No, see that's the things. vehicle moving. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take the whole Earth's crust with us back up to the top. <laughs> and all of the sediment with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right. Thanks for trying. No blue button. No blue button, Raj. Ready? Craft valve off. Craft off. Now blue button. Now blue. Someday somebody's going to ask us about why we keep talking about the blue button. <laughs> and I fear we're just going to have to shrug. <laughs> I it's think people it have asked. Way. Yeah. <laughs> You know how sometimes people hotwire cars? <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> we have some very, very smart technicians on board. And they hotwired the arm. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? Gross. <sighs> <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm just going to come up a bit. This yeah, is annoying. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. It's very clear once you get above this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, we can see an Argus. Yeah. Dust cloud. Yeah. There you go. Nice. Another maybe an enemy or is that a rock? No, uh, that's uh, probably attached. Looks very attached. Yeah. Yeah. This area looks very old, very sedimented together very encrusted together. I'm really sorry that we couldn't get you a rock for your birthday, Amber. That's okay. Her birthday's not over. <laughs> we'll make the other oh, watches good do point. it. We might, yeah, they might, they might get her one. We got all day. <laughs> and the clock's not out, really. Like, yeah, until I hear that van door open, we have time on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> Let's run out the clock. <laughs> You heard the woman. Show us some rocks. Come on, rocks. I feel lucky. I mean, this is a nice rock wall. Yeah. It won't fit in the bio box. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> Are you Not absolutely with sure that. about that? <laughs> 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 what if we folded it up nice and neat? 
There's probably some nice rocks hiding below the sediment, unfortunately. Just probably. Can we potentially poke any of the ones that are just off to the left of our view? Yeah, that one looked possible. Sure. Any of these little guys? Happy to poke. I'm wondering if maybe we could do our poking without setting down. Yeah, let's do that. Because <laughs> that was a nightmare. <laughs> I'm Rod. not sure how much better it will it's be. It's bad enough <laughs> just like even looking at it. Okay, blue button is yeah. on. Okay, ready for the craft valve to I, go? Yeah. I will be. No. Now that the sediment moved, it looks yes, attached. Yes, it is. <laughs> it, it really does. <laughs> <laughs> it did before, but now we see okay, it ready? is. Yeah. You got it. Okay. Oh, also underneath that ledge. Maybe there. Maybe? Possible. Oh. Not Possible. Not that guy. Okay. No, I think it's attached. Come here. No. Nope. Yep, okay. nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A valiant effort. We said under the ledge, too? I thought maybe, but looking more closely, I don't think so. Right. Okay. You're stashed nicely. No blue button. No blue. Ready? Yeah. I will say, the joint, the joints are all feeling a lot more natural than mm -hmm. ever in my life. I just That's put it back up, and I didn't even have to think about it. I was like, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry. Sound effects. Sorry really for good that. Sound effects there. <laughs> Sorry. No, Those I were arm sound effects. <laughs> I, thought job, they were, I thought they were really <laughs> accurate. I'm on a blue button now. Amber is looking for angular volcanic Yeah, I'm rocks. telling you, like you're just going to wait yes. to wake up the, one day and you're just going to get it. Loose rocks. Be fine. Since we don't have a way to cut it. off rocks from the outcrop itself. And ah. we're very hopeful Ooh, a sea star. before our 20 hour dive is over. We tried. Can you come up a bit? <laughs> Sorry? Oh. All right. Thank you all for tuning in to our 12 to 4 watch. We are now getting ready to transition for the four to eight watch. Thank you so much. Thanks everyone. Give me 4K there when you get a chance. Yes, please. 
is it even on? Wow. Should have tilted those lights back down. Hello, four to eight. Are you? Science and ROV. Um, sounds like we've been slowly moving to waypoint two uh, with the ship aligned with the stern heading to waypoint two based on current direction. Um, any particular changes that you want to enact to what the last ship has been doing? I can't hear you, Dan. Can't hear me? No, I can. Yeah, I'm good. Ready to go. Good from Dan. Steve? Yeah, so uh, the plan is, uh, you know, we don't want to get too far out in the mud, so we'd like to track up some of these uh, exposed features, exposed faces, um, for the best we can and see if anything's fallen off. We're looking for rocks still, and uh, the best chance we're going to find them is probably in and around these outcrops. Okay, uh, you want to do like 50 meter subs then? 20, 50? 50. 50. Yeah, 50 is fine. Sound good, Dan? Sounds good to me. Great. Uh, nice and slow because it's steep, steep. If it gets steeper, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dial that back. Okay, um, I've got 015 for uh, bearing. Is that, yeah, that line? Great. Bridge, nap. Fifty five zero meters one five zero. It's steep, all right. Sorry, I'll come back around. I was pulling on you there. Yeah. Kind of incredible that there is so much sediment, given how steep it is. Let's preview to come. What's to come? <laughs> Do we know what the the angle of the slope is, give or take? It was reported here somewhere around thirty degrees, but okay. I would say this is probably uh, a little bit more than that. I would say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just looking at it sideways there, and that's why I dusted myself coming back out of it. What is that? I don't know, you can zoom in on it. It's clear, gelatinous. It's a fine gut. You're there, Tammy. You can zoom. Now we've been looking at a few of these. Uh, it's perfect, thanks. Sea cucumbers through the dive today. We were tentatively identified these as Peniagony or Emperima. There's two, two very similar, similarly looking species, uh, or rather genera. We've seen quite a few of them in the last hour or so. Yeah. Well, the sediment is definitely there. Their well, jam. Calm one. 56. A good place to 57, be. 57, 6. Mm -hmm. It's probably already open. up there. I'm going to have to be careful. I'm going to have to put my training wheels back on. Well, hello world. We're happy to be on again. Delta Dan and the Arachnopho band on watch with you for the next couple of hours. Looks like we've hit the bottom. We're super excited to begin our explorations. I'm going to start off with a brief um, explanation of our objectives. We can introduce ourselves again. And then I want to invite you all to um, enter your questions, comments, 
and ideas in the chat. So this dive, we will explore the western ridge of an unnamed seamount, previously named Seamount Sea, along a 3.5 kilometer transect upslope. We're going to start at approximately 2,800 meters depth and move toward the summit, which is at approximately 1,500 meters depth. This ridge was recently mapped just yesterday by the EV Nautilus in order to facilitate dive selection in this area. This site has never been explored and we don't have any geological samples on file for here. So we're really hoping to get some geological and biological samples so we can better understand the biological and geological features of this area. So we're happy to have y'all join us. I'm Dr. Dejana Figueroa, Science Communication Fellow and overall ocean exploration enthusiast. Happy to be here. Um, I'll keep my eyes on the chat. Kind of share your comments and questions as we as we explore and go through. And next to me here on the back row, we have... My name is Jordan Akiyama. I'm a public affairs specialist with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service based out of Honolulu, Hawaii. And I am also a, well, I am now a very much greater deep sea enthusiast. Woo but I'm also an enthusiast of our uh, science lead next to me. Changing hearts and minds every day. Um, <laughs> my name is Steve Oskovich. I'm the watch lead for the 4 to 8, as well as the lead scientist for this uh, expedition out to the area around Kingman Reef and Palmyra Atoll. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at Boston University where I study deepwater corals, their biodiversity and biogeography, primarily in this region of the Central Pacific. Sitting to Steve's right, um, I'm Rebecca Lippitt in the data logger position for this 4 to 8 watch. I'm a second year PhD student at the University of Rhode Island where I study marine geology. Happy to be here. Happy to have you all. I'm starting to really like this crew starting to feel like a little strange family. I like it. And um, I'm looking forward to hearing our new fact from our video engineer. <laughs> Can you go ahead and introduce yourself self and share a new fact? <laughs> uh, sure. Uh, I'm Tammy Gomez. I'm the video engineer. Uh, when you ask for a fact, I don't have them. <laughs> your interesting facts come back to me I'll think of something oh. interesting I come back I should make all of us tell an interesting fact Jordan do you have an interesting fact I own too many Legos <laughs> <laughs> that's a nice one Steve interesting fact uh, interesting fact uh, about yourself uh, Uh, come, come back to me. <laughs> we'll come back. I, I, I'm, I'm a little, uh, I have this little, like, echo in my headset. Just trying. Yeah, I, I turned off SPL. It, it seems like... I think it sounds like it's coming from one of the back row computers. Or back row... Uh, I wonder if it's me. Well, as we figure that out, I think my interesting fact would be for about five years, I was the deepest diving African-American woman in the world with my deepest uh, sub dive at 3,700 meters. That's a really good fun wow. fact. Wow, that was a good fun fact. Wait, so you, you were someone has He's beating you? That is correct. Oh. Oh. <laughs> this well, sounds like a challenge for you to go ahead and now take back the title. Okay, Steve, next dive, we got to go below 3,700. Uh, you don't have to actually physically be in the sub? No, that one I had to physically be in the sub oh. for that record. Goodness. <laughs> trying 
again. I can, I can hear it too. My, my jacket. I still hear it. We're working on it. Steve, did I miss your fact? No, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm thinking through it. I'm trying to make it really good fun fact, not just like mundane. <laughs> I've got one. Um, so my ocean fun fact, I suppose, um, is I've been cage diving with great whites in South Africa. Uh, that's amazing. That was really cool. Keep moving, yeah. I'll go. I'm Dan in the front row, sitting in the herd chair. Fun fact, I sat down here 10 minutes ago. We started moving Nautilus, and I'm still waiting for Argus to move. <laughs> That's why we're looking at the same bit of mud. Uh, I'm Samantha Wishnack, navigator. Uh, I just put in another ship move so that maybe Dan can move. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a while for it to get down there to Argus. Yeah. Giant pendulum. We have one more member of the front row team. Uh, hi, I'm Antonella, Argus seat. Also waiting for the ship to move. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very much so. Well, there you have it. That completes Delta Dan and the Arachnophobe Band, our introductions and fun facts about us. Had some cool questions coming in. Um, before I get to the sciencey ones, what is your favorite Lego set? I collect Legos too. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, that's a tough one. Uh, I'd say right now my favorite set that I own is probably my Ghostbusters Firehouse. Oh my god, I want it! <laughs> I was gonna say that was my dream set that I want, but I have I have the Echo too. So we together we could have a complete. <laughs> have a complete yes. No ghost would be safe. <laughs> my favorite set that I haven't put together yet is actually the ocean exploration set, which is of a research vessel. With oh yeah. Subs. That one's really cool. I have the uh, the undersea base from that set. Nice. Is it the one that just recently yes, came out? Yes, yeah, yes, the undersea base and then the sub. Year. Yeah, put them together a few months ago, and uh, now they're in pieces again. <laughs> <laughs> so I look forward to rebuilding it. <laughs> that does happen. On the Nautilus Live website, there is a uh, build a Lego build plan for ROV Hercules. If any fans out there want their very own. ROV. Um, stop the presses. Can you say that again, please? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on the Nautilus Live website, if you go to our education resources, um, under the education tab, you can find your very own Lego build plan for an ROV Hercules that someone developed a few years ago. I'm er going to do this, and then I'm going to create little mi little mini figures of the entire Delta Dan and the Reactive Flow Band. <laughs> there you go. Little oh, heck yes. Band. <laughs> Well, if you make any build plans, uh, you can send them our way and we'll put them on our website. <laughs> That's awesome. Can we do a 20-meter um, step uh, sure can. west? West. So there should be some something coming up, right? Yeah. It's something substantial. Bridge nav. Two zero meters bearing uh, 280. All right. Yes. 280. Thank you. This might be a question for you, Jordan. Um, hey, we got a shout out. Yay, y'all are my favorite watch. I'm sure they see that every watch, but thank you. We appreciate that. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your operations like sample collection roles are different from outside of the monument versus inside of the monument? I 
Well, for us in Fish and Wildlife, we co-manage the monuments with other agencies like uh, NOAA. And so because anything that happens in the monument, there are a lot of protections protecting it from you know, taking too many samples, disrupting the ha natural that habitat. Definitely does. Like you want to do a white balance? Taking samples within the monument, there's only a certain limit of samples you, you can take grab per the dive. Up, per, stick it out there for her. Per yeah. area. Whereas when you're diving outside areas of the monument like we are now, those restrictions don't necessarily apply. Got it, got it. So there, there are different roles. Like we don't have the same sort of restrictions that we had That's before. Correct. Yeah. Okay, cool. And thanks for noticing that, yeah, this is our okay. first dive Remind outside me, of the so monument. So we want to have the hydraulics on before craft off, okay. Yeah, not all the, the monument, monument units for the Pacific Rim Islands Marine National Monument are uh, kind of like what we are experiencing really? here for King of Palmyra. So this is one special case where you know, we're still within all U.S. Right. waters, but the, the the boundaries of the monument oh, are restricted to a very small okay. area around yeah, Kingman sorry. Reef and Palmyra. Uh, but there are entire areas uh, like Johnston Atoll and uh, what else, Jarvis Island, uh, where the protected area is basically encompasses the entire the white, exclusive economic the zone, there. an area about 200 so miles around uh, those islands. Come down a bit so the white bit's out in the light. So, so it's this kind of a there. unique Sorry. case. There you go. Oh, sorry. It's all right, it. hold it there. That's good. Okay. Okay, Timmy. I don't know if y'all are available up there front row, but there. All right, going black. All right. Yeah, we're listening. <laughs> Uh, they're curious as to why we have to wait oh, for this ship to move. Why did that move. not work? That might be part of our problem. Let's try that again. Uh, it's actually not the ship where we move Argus, and uh, Argus is uh, 2,600 meters and change above us. So, yeah. Below us. Takes a while. Got it. We call that a layback or. Two and a half kilometers of cable hanging down, so. Ready for me to stow, Timmy? Yeah, uh, I don't know if that, it looks a little better now. It's still quite blue. It is. Maybe it's just how it is. Wait, it did act kind of funny when I tried to white balance, so. That looks a little better. So it's too far out for it. Okay, we've got four meters left in this step. Do you want another step, or we can continue north? Uh, let's do one more step. Another 20 meters? 20, another 20. Roger. Bridge nav. Dan, remind me, Looks craft valve before hydraulics? Add another two. Uh, yeah. Okay. This one hydraulics here. is still on. Yeah, just leave the blue valve on. Leave the blue one on. Okay. It doesn't need to be turned up. Okay. Looks like we're mostly tracking up these sheet flows here, and these are probably volcanic you know, lava flows that just cover, encase the side of the seamount. But uh, it's not a lot of rubble here, which is really suspicious. Um, suspicious. So either stuff still is falling down slope if it falls off here, which is entirely possible. There's a, a very steep slope, and there's no guarantee that something's going to stop just because it hits the bottom or breaks off. Just keep going, huh? Just keeps on going. You but a lot of these the habitats are pretty meters. stable, too. Okay. Give me some more leash there. My altitude's breaking 10. Is it? Almost. Oh, okay, never mind. I was looking at this one, and I saw 60-something. Ah, uh, yeah, the altimeter is pretty noisy. Well, while we're, we're hanging out here, is there any chance we can zoom on this uh, stick? Yeah, it's the only thing to zoom on. <laughs> What do you mean? There's a bunch of rocks here. <laughs> there are rocks. We've got team geology uh, putting okay, in go a ahead, lot of, uh, stuff in the chat here. So team rocks. Are I mean, the, the crusts look really about. nice oh, in, in certain places. Ooh. This little coral feels lonely to me.
Yeah. Looks like we have a Bamboo coral. Very dusty. Ooh, that would be that? too close. Yeah. Well, we got some images and made it made a good ID. So if it gets too dusty, we can move on. Uh, I'm still uh, trying to get Argus over here behind us so we can head up the hill. It's really steep, so we're gonna have to be kind of. Careful there. As we pull out here, Rebecca, can I ask you a question about sure. geological samples? They're wanting to know what we hope to learn. What are our target um, take-home so messages? Did you pick that manip up from yeah. sampling? Yeah. So one of the geologists on board is hoping to date some of these rocks, um, some of the volcanic material that we've been pulling up. Maybe um, not in order to kind of better place the formation of these islands in geologic time, or not always islands, but these seamounts in geologic time. Um, another geologist is hoping to look at the ferromanganese crusts and kind of take them into consideration with data from the water column, so things like dissolved oxygen, temperature, um, and see Come if up, uh, the formation okay. of these crusts can be uh, I guess characterized or um, partnered with some of those water column characteristics. So that's what we're hoping to look at geologically. Yep. Are there any specific differences that we're going to be looking for um, compared to our previous dives inside versus outside of the monument? I think here um, we're going to spend a little bit more time, hopefully, looking for some ferromanganese nodules um, in addition to some of the loose rocks that we've been collecting inside That's the monument there. as well. Okay. Um, there are a couple of different dips or kind of saddles um, in this dive track where we path might path? expect to find them. So that would be another thing to add to the list. Sweet. Where'd it go? I floated up. Oh, right Both all the sediment, who knows what we'll find. There's oh. a lot of sediment. There's Two bits of coral in the sediment. Yeah, probably uh, sea cucumbers or urchins. Yep. Oh, really? That's a lot. You can usually tell by the fecal cast there. Sometimes you can match it up with something that you push in a bit there. there. That is an area of study, studying the fecal cast of <coughs> and fauna. Yep. That's interesting. I've never seen a so on this lower colony here. It looks like we have a zoanthid parasitizing a sea pen. I don't know if I've seen that very often. Zoanthids taking over sea pens. Actually, they take over more sub, uh, substantial hard substrate. They actually could be a colonial type of anemone. I don't want to jump to conclusions. So it might not actually be a zoanthid. Actually, it looks more anemone-like. Okay. Okay, thanks. Less lonely, though. Ready to go north, Dan? Yes, ma'am. Roger. Let's do uh, zero two zero. Roger. Bridge now. Five zero meter. Uh, five zero meters bearing zero two zero. There's nothing on the uh, the far right side of this rock. Yep. Down below, is there? Headed there. Okay. They're going to have to come up a bit, Antonella. I'm going to come under you. The tough okay. thing about planning dives at these particular seamounts is that, you know, it, it, it's more than likely that these seamounts, uh, you know, the, the rock that we're seeing is really just covered by maybe a few centimeters of Current sediment. To our left. So if we were to look at a backscatter right. imagery of okay. kind of where the hard substrate is, this area would appear like hard, hard bottom. Um, but... It's, uh, hey, what, can you explain that a little more? Why would it appear hard, hard yeah. bottom due to the sediment? Yeah, if you're, um, what's that down there? Anemone. Um, so, you know, the, there is, uh, we have two, a couple different sonar systems on board. We have our 
multi-beam system, which tells us a little bit of Im information about the quality of the sound that's returning from the seafloor, um, you know, if it's scattered or if it's um, uh, or if it's uh, absorbed by the sediments. I think this is uh, I think this is a, a crinoid in the family Phrynocrinidae has these branched arms. It's not a morphology I'm familiar with, but it's really long. One of the longer ones I've seen. Uh, but we also have a system called sub uh, sub bottom, which actually allows us to penetrate the sediment and look at the underlying rock um, or layers of sediment in a particular area, and that tells us something about the thickness of the sediments. So if we were trying to plan a dive and we saw, for example, um, you know a high back scatter, you know the sounds being scattered when it hits the sea floor. Um, you know, that would lead us to conclude that there's probably hard substrate here, but we never really know until we get down to the seafloor how much of it might be covered by a sediment and what kind of thickness that might be. Is it just a veneer or is it just uh, maybe a few centimeters? Got it. Anything under that ledge? I mean, I know it's a tight crevice, but... I have a peek. The best, best, best shot we have right now. Yeah, let's poke some rocks. Take, take a little peek. Oh. Everything else looks really stuck. See. Following your sediment discussion, we have questions about what does the sediment consist of? What is it made of? Is it all biological material? It's a bit of both. So a lot of sediments out here are uh, combinations of uh, biogenic, so created by animals. Um, in this case, a lot of the material from these depths is foraminiferin shells, so small grains of, of uh, foraminiferin tests. Foraminiferins are uh, things that live up in the upper ocean, usually in the photic zone. Uh, they grow a shell, They're almost like a single single celled organism. They grow a shell, and uh, that shell, when it animal dies, sinks down to the seafloor, accumulates. Uh, there's also some maybe finer grain sediments. Uh, you can find like really small particle sizes. Uh, those might be from who knows, you know, even terrestrial sources. You can get terrestrial dusts that scatter out thousands and thousands and thousands of miles at sea. Um, but for the most part, uh, it's those small shells and uh, maybe on just on the top surface layer, uh, a little bit of. Uh, uh, phytodetritus. So in this case, it's you know, marine snow that's accumulated over years and years. Kind of the sticky part that holds all the sediment together. Thanks. I don't see anything really obviously loose here, which is pretty stunning. Uh, we might have to take a crack at it, no pun intended, Come try and break something off. Sure. Uh, what about this pile? Yeah, over I was going to gonna say that yeah. little. Yeah. Oh, is this a stop and poke? Uh, we could poke on the fly. Poke on the fly router. We're stretched out, so we'll have some time. Four K is your friend here, so okay. just be able to bump it and it come out a little and on. It should come into view. Okay. Oh, unable to cross off. So we're we're zooming in here on a potential candidate for a rock sample using a technique called stop and poke. Okay. <laughs> it's more like fly and poke. Pre poke. Previously been referred to as the science tap. Ah, yes. Science tap. Tap, tap. Oh. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Nope. And, uh, keep your weapon hot there. We'll yep. Can you 
you tell us a little bit about the ideal rock candidate and how we want it to be kind of loose? Right <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, so one, it's attached to these sheet flows. Uh, it's really hard to break a piece off oh, that's using fine. the arm, right? So if we find little piles of float, so just loose oh. pieces kind of in the yeah, same area, um, that's Hold always on, a good candidate. Oh. Kind of grab from. Um, sometimes we get lucky though, and some of the rocks okay. themselves are either a little weathered or are easily broken off of some of these ridges. Um, but that hasn't necessarily been the case during this cruise. So, gotta stop and poke things, see what's up, nope. make decisions from there. Yeah, I might be able to get that out with some digging. No. Okay. I bonked it hard enough to move the vehicle. Okay. What did you call it? Float? Float, yeah, Never piles heard of that float. Before. I learned so many new geology words on this ship, you would not believe. <laughs> Last year uh, was a revelation for me. <laughs> I learned how to describe okay. rocks. <laughs> rounded, sub-rounded, angular, yeah. sub-angular. Or just move it off that, leave it hot if you want. Okay. Different size classes. Just move it out of the camera view. Amazing. Uh, bring the shoulder yeah, all the way different up. size crystals. It's crazy. Yeah. You want? Yeah, bring it inboard somewhat. Okay. Sure. Okay. Better kill the crap out though. Yep. Bring it out. Going. Um, hello Hawaii. Hello Ontario. Hello That's Vancouver, good. British yeah. Columbia. Mm -hmm. Hello, oh, India. Nice. Thanks for joining us. Oh, I see you. Thanks for that shout out. Fans of Aliens of the Deep. I'm so glad I was able to introduce you to the excitement. We need to change your bearing to 0, 4, 5. Is, it there, is there anything, uh, are any of these lips real that, you know, look like you can get something out of? Like if you're Yeah, maybe if you could hook, hook the claws underneath or something. Looks like there's maybe like exposed something in that area. All right. Okay. Let's get your weapon out again when you get ready. It's getting worse, that echo. My my mic was doing some sort of weird feedback thing, so. You, you know still craft valve coming on? Oh, there. It's a little bit. Yeah, it came back to your last. It's gone. Commanded position. Yeah. Yeah. What am I poking here? Whatever you think you can break off. Yeah, uh, if there's anything on these lips that you can break off. Sometimes you can get under the crust there a little. Bit. Bonus points if it has that bamboo coral on it. Uh -huh. Roger. Kind of do the sentinel, the jaws. Bam. Yeah. Smack it on the. But. Uh, I'm to. Let me get a little closer. All right. So Nav, can you show me where uh, where we're headed? Uh, in which sure. direction? I feel kind of far away. Steve, do you want more waypoints? Uh, no, can you just show me like where it's approximately at what angle we're headed? In the 4K? Uh, are we headed directly to waypoint two? Yeah, I'll turn my head a little. Oh. Or uh, is like, heading. can you draw the line? Yeah. Uh, right now, right now we're stepping this way. Okay. Um, That's a good bonk, but you want to do that right on the edge. Great. Yeah, sorry. That's perfect, thanks. Okay, pull it out of there for a minute. I'm okay. struggling here. I didn't see any likely candidates in there. Nope. It's not friable enough to... 
Pretty solid. All right, let's keep going up uh, when you guys are ready. Yeah, we're moving all the time. I'm moving over here to the east to another target. We have we have time. Uh, this is only about a three and a half kilometer dive track uh, to do in the next day or so. So we should have plenty of time to poke around if we need to. And still be able to c complete the track. Yeah, I'm zigging and zagging sonar targets here. There's some just kind of ahead. Yeah. They're gonna. You know, I can come up. Sorry. Completely, t completely teasing. Sorry. Like nice rocky habitat, but nothing there. Something rolled down the hill there. Mm. <laughs> I I think that solved the problem. That was that's our rock. Follow that trail all the way down. <laughs> <laughs> Guaranteed. That would be a fun dive. <laughs> Watch it be one of those snails, those rolling snails. <laughs> oh, All right. Okay, I'll take that 20 meters to the east now. Uh, Roger, zero nine zero. Yeah. Bridge now. Let's move uh, two zero meters, bearing zero nine zero. Can uh, I'll chase this one down the hill a little while we're. On the way up, I'd love to take a look at what that little splotch is. Yeah, I can look now. Can I get there? Looks like maybe a sea star. I think so. You got enough? Am I tugging on you, or can you? No, uh, you're tugging on me. Let's go tail to tail. Yeah. It's kind, kind yeah. of like a snow angel. <laughs> Right? Like a, a, in the shape of a star. Yeah. <laughs> As we're zooming into this okay, tell me. potential sea star, hello, San Carlos, California, Seattle, Red Rock, New Mexico, and Nova Scotia. Thanks for joining us. San Carlos, California, Sierra High, represent. Uh oh. Hello. <laughs> Uh, it, lo it looks like a some type of star. I can't even tell if it's a brittle star or a... I'm guessing it's probably a brittle star. The, it, the thick center makes me think it's a brittle star. Yeah, it's really well buried. It's probably chewing on some uh, invertebrates or something in the sediment, perhaps, or maybe sediment itself. No, okay, all set, thanks. I can't get a steady shot because I'm pulling on Argus at the moment. That's okay, there's not much to look at. Yeah. Great sand angel. <laughs> it's not every day you get to make a sediment angel. <laughs> Can you see anything in your down facing cameras down there that looks potential? Yeah. Rocky. Do you know whereabouts on waypoint or waypoint two is on this map? Yeah, there's there's a faint line. Oh, okay. Uh, Let's change the should be to uh, one three five. Maybe in this draft. One three five. Yeah, twenty meters. Well, we can we can look up in the table here. So waypoint two is seven hundred and fourteen meters in. So that's seven. So out there. Okay. Yep. There might be some uh, float and stuff collected in like the little divots. Yeah. 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 Although I uh, made the mistake on more than one occasion to assume that maybe there would be rocks on the flat top of a seamount, <laughs> but in fact they're usually all pretty well cemented. I'm surprised there's yeah uh, there's not more biology in this area. Um, it could be stagnant flow conditions. 
Nice glass sponge here. Maybe sacrocalyx. And uh, something next to it too. Purple crinoid, yeah. Purple crinoid on the stock. Okay, now what's your real altimeter? And maybe so the small bamboo coral at the base of it, yeah. adjacent. The, the bouncing you see is uh, the ship. That's my excuse. It's kind of picturesque the way the crinoid is, our angle, <laughs> and how the crinoid is on the stock. You yeah. Turn off your auto heading. Yeah, that's a crinoid. Looks like there's a bunch of maybe parasites on that crinoid. Small gastropods or crustaceans sometimes. Are those the little the dots that you see? Yeah. On the arms? Yeah, or I think so. I guess it's not arms, it's a crinoid. What would I call that part of the crinoid? Arms. Arms? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just not legs. <laughs> you want to see a kind of derm biologist says I twitch a little bit call them legs <laughs> okay. <Pretty> low <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right trying to break your record here yeah, it's muddy. <laughs> Stop the camera. The big tentacles or something coming out of that. Oh, yeah. you know what I think that is? What is it? On the on the down current side, I think there are probably tenophores, and those are the tentacles of the tenophore, oh. the benthic tenophores. We saw that before in the last dive. Yeah, yeah. It's hard for yeah. me to see from our vantage point right They're now. They're really close to. It. Yeah, just you'd have bottom. to rotate around. I, I think I yep, do see the body of the one in the 4K down-looking camera. But yeah, that's what those look like. up uh, five meters. Okay. Or at least three. Okay. You're looking up into the hill, though, right? Uh, yeah, because yeah. I'm pulling you down the hill. Yep. Well, I think those those small dots on the crinoid were probably actually just crustaceans because they, they seem to have scattered a bit. And I see some small dots swimming around, so they're probably you play with the amphipods or something the, like uh, that. 4K? Yeah, something that moves. Yeah. So third row oh, fun fact about me. Okay. Uh, oh. I've eaten numerous Tina Fours in my life. Mm. Not by accident. Wait. By choice. Yeah. Sounds like a beer bet. What? Yeah. What kind of Tina Fours? No, we don't know how to respond to that one, Steve. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to make it fun and informative. <laughs> what kind of Tina Fours, Steve? Um, uh, local, organic, uh, <laughs> definitely, definitely, uh, Non-GMO. <laughs> from what from, depths from, you? From Long Island Sound. Interesting. Yes. <laughs> I break your record. And was there some sort of preparation? Were they no, steamed no. or? Nope. No, just <laughs> straight from the ocean. Hmm. You know what they hit, <laughs> taste like? No one's going to ask me. What do they taste okay, like? Okay, we're out here. Salt. Okay. Salts. Yep. Salty gel. What texture? What, what made you do this? Um... Still wonder that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a uh, you know. There's nothing wrong with Tina Fours. Science. They're just they're just jelly. Try everything. Yep. So does it kind of taste like gel, like Jello? Salt well, salty, salty Jello. Jell yeah, pretty much. Salty yep. Jello. And what sort of wine would I pair this with in the future? Uh, do, uh, definitely gonna want to pair it with around dessert around. dessert yeah. wine. So something <laughs> sweet, <laughs> maybe a little acidic. Cut through the salt. So that ship moves complete. You want to keep right. heading northeast? Yeah, let me come back on the other side of Argus here. Okay. Or we'll probably that dial it in once very get fun here. It's fact. actually not all that different from eating an oyster, to be here. truthfully honest. If you've ever had an oyster, a you know, half shell oyster, 
Was it like a little tiny Tina Fours little, or the big? Sorry, oh, a, you know, the size of a half dollar or something. Okay. I'm right, I'm right under you now. Do they still make those half dollars? I was going to say, do people still know what a half dollar is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, questions about it. Does it taste like chicken? Not in this case. <laughs> if you want, you can hold that. Oh, pretty much just says it tastes like jelly. All okay. the Salty jelly. You can uh, come up ten, come up five. Sorry. Okay, that one's pretty special. People all over over the world are now googling Tina for tasting. Can we try poking that rock on top of the ledge there? Yeah. It's kind of sticking out. Oh yeah, let me point to this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Oops. Sure. Telestrator. Still on. Yeah, it's still sticking up there. You do have to be careful. Don't don't go out and just start eating tina fours. Uh, <laughs> there are actually some tina fours that are uh, hosts for a, a parasitic anemone. <laughs> <laughs> Only do it if you have the knowledge Steve has. Yes, you got to know what to look for. And even then, and even then, carefully. <laughs> Part of this new okay. low trophic diet. Parasitic anemone. All right. I looked up Tina Fours, commonly known as uh, comb jellies or comb bearers, because they have rows of fused cilia arranged along the sides of the animal. They're clearly visible along the red lines of pictures seen online. The cilia beat synchronously and propel the Tina Four through the water. Some species move with a flapping motion. I know where it is of now. their lobes. Okay. Many tina fours well, have two long tentacles. Yeah, okay. It's up to you. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I will. Just so if we turn the valve off, it doesn't jump. Some lack tentacles. Yeah, Perfect. Okay. And they the taste like salty jelly. Hmm. Sure. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I don't quite trust it. You know what's extraordinary about this site is how much sediment there is, yeah, considering how far offshore we are. We're, we're quite far from land now, uh, even the nearest land, Kingman Reef or Palmyra. So this is all just primarily okay, so biogenic kick her in the sediments. Gear. Is this letting us know, is this giving us an indication of the productivity in the surface? Uh, either that or, or that it's 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 uh, stable enough that uh, there it's not disturbed in a way that would cause, for example, landslides very frequently. So it just could be Lots and lots of accumulation. It's also probably indicative of pretty stagnant flows in this area. Usually if you have rapid flows, come sometimes keep sediment off of the uh, you know, flat surfaces. If there's slow flows here, would that be one reason why there's a little less biology that we're kind of coming across? Yeah, uh, almost certainly. Yeah. But we're kind of climbing up to the crest of a ridge here, uh, a little bit of a platform on top that should have, hopefully, you know, as we start to creep up from from around the surrounding uh, seafloor, flows may increase, currents may increase. Yeah, th this is a this is an interesting site for multiple reasons. Um, not o not only are we outside of the monument, but we're also in an area that may be perhaps unrelated to you know th the area that was formed. Um, you know that the area that formed the Line Islands Ridge. We don't really know very much about you know how all these seamounts north of the monument, north of the Line Islands. Uh, were created or when they were created, if they were created all at the same time, uh, if if they're all from the same source, you know, volcanic hotspot, for example, it's likely that there were multiple passes through this area by various different hotspots over tens of millions of years. So that's why these rocks are really important, so we can understand the formation of this region.
the nor th this feature was, I think, among my most favorite sea mounts when I was planning this these uh, series of dives because it's just it's an incredible diversity of different types of geology, geomorphology. It's a guillot, but at the no extreme north end, there's like a knife edge ridge that comes off uh, with a summit at around 2,200 meters, but s sides that just slope off so dramatically. At the southern end, there are these some cones too, look like volcanic cones kind of walking up the ridge on the south side. Um, of course, you've got the flat top guillot uh, with some pretty steep uh, rises just below the summit on all sides. Well, that'll happen. I'll be reaching those spots towards the end of our dive, end of this dive, so tomorrow morning-ish. So tune in. <laughs> yeah. Geos, like I didn't know what a geo. Mesa. Yeah. Yeah. That was a thing that um I wasn't familiar with that term and my understanding is it is a term used to describe a seamount with a flat top. Yep. Yeah. Potential rock there. Rock candidate? Let's do it. Candidate. We'll get a closer look. Yeah. But we get ready. Now, the, the color on these rocks changes Crestfall. surprisingly. I mean I noticed they were a little bit darker, down deeper. Maybe yeah. it's because there's sediment on these, but yeah, I see what I see where you're going here. This one looks mm -hmm. detached, maybe. Maybe or just sediment on the. This candidate has my vote. Let's see what happens. Right. Let me uh, perch here. Yep. your friend now. Yeah. Oops, sorry, I'm pushing you. Yeah. It's pretty... You didn't touch it. Yeah, I think you touched I the... Uh, thought I hooked underneath it. No. Okay. Let me try again. So currently we're attempting to collect a rock sample. Kill the viz here, but Sorry? So they're gonna kill the viz, but you can poke it. Okay. Can we also just it. completed a ship move. <laughs> I don't know where it is. Nope. Okay. You can't land sideways there, it just blows it out. Nice sponge. Alright, you can park it. Sorry guys. No, no, go over there. Oh, uh, that question's coming in. Is it hard to control that robotic arm? Can be, yeah. Uh, that's holding an angry boa constrictor. I think it takes some training, practice, and experience. But like most things, I'm sure it's something that can be mastered. The hard part I'm is, uh, Roger, it's attached to a vehicle that has six degrees of freedom, and it has six degrees of freedom, plus the gripper. Or a lot of things going on all at one time <coughs> when we're trying to poke on the fly like that. Yeah. Sometimes we get lucky, and sometimes we stuff the side of the vehicle into the mud cliff and visibility disappears. That's a real thing. Okay. No sonar Continue targets. Continue on. Continuing. Okay. All right. Cool. Bridge, Jeff. A little question for you, Jordan. 
What does it mean when we say monument? Uh, monuments are like, when you think about a monument, something that is you know, afforded protections, right? Like the Washington National Monuments and Monuments, uh, uh, Monument Valley in Arizona. There are these Looks natural like form land features that are provided federal protections by the United okay. States. So when we talk your, about the like Pacific Remote Islands Marine National Monuments, it's one oh, of it's far out, yeah. four marine national monuments that There's the U.S. has sort of overseen Catch it on uh, here, jurisdiction over here in the Pacific Ocean. Okay. The other ones being the Kinda Rosatoll National Monument, right which there. is south of us near America Samoa. Um, the Nor Northern Marianas Marine National Monument, which is up by okay. uh, Guam, and then okay? Papanahamu yeah, Kukia Marine it National Monument, which is just northwest of yeah. the Wainai, uh, main Islands. Yeah. <laughs> We're sloppy. So there you go. Yeah. That's super helpful, because yeah, when I think of a monument, okay, I think secure. of Project. You know, Thank Washington you. Monument. Right. So to think of it in terms of a marine monument. Yeah, so it's just the same thing as saying, like, a monument on land, just out at sea. Got it. Got it. Thanks. That was a really good description. I want to change her bearing to 045 again. I'm going to keep you busy, Sam. You have to write all that stuff down. I'd just like to have a track of where we've been. <laughs> yeah. Just chasing sonar targets. Yep. Numbers tend to leave my brain as soon as they uh, go in, so I like to write them down in case I need to repeat them. Yeah, totally. Let's see what well, that makes me feel more comfortable. How far have we moved since we got on bottom? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, ask, I'm asking for, pace, for pacing, yeah. pacing questions. Yeah, <laughs> give me a second. Approximately. We're, loosely I'd say we're zigzagging, uh, but give me a second to give you an actual. Linear distance is fine. Yeah. I'll wait for you this time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, Steve, we've gone about 185 meters uh, as the sea crow flies. Mm. Sea crow? Sea crow. But we did a few uh, zigzags, as you can see. Sea crow. Got it. <laughs> that one's going to stick, Sam. Oh, that one's been around for a while. Really? Yeah. I've not heard that one before. I like the sea crow. Sorry. Ooh, what's oh. happening? Oh, that's the double Sounds auto like update. Song. And the vehicle oh, shoot, will now contact that to the our <laughs> As the sea crow flies. I gotta add that to our list of song so titles. So that's a bug. That's a bug in the control system. <laughs> yeah, the first time you engage auto altitude, it just pins the verts 100% down. <laughs> By the time you realize it and turn it off, it's too late. The vehicle's moving in a knot and towards the seabed. That's exciting. <laughs> Park's been a little self-destructive, but <laughs> good to know. I hate it when fixed. it does that. <laughs> I could pull up on it, but then the biz would be like gone for days. Your your description sounded very official too. It was like, oh, vehicle's gonna contact the seafloor. <laughs> 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 Excuse me, good sir. <laughs> so um, uncommanded landing. Yeah. <laughs> There's been a lot of talk about autonomous cars recently have there been any autonomous rovs in development much like this funny you would mention that <laughs> <laughs> antonella has one in her briefcase <laughs> <laughs> um yeah there's a lot of work in marine autonomy that's the field i work in um when i'm off the ship um but we talk about it a lot if you want um yeah so AUVs have been along, around for a long time, um, like the kind of traditional torpedo shaped ones, like Remuses. Um, those are kind of, they are autonomous, but they're very dumb. You pre-plan a survey and they kind of go along and just take sonar or imagery or whatever payload they have on them. Um, but there's not a lot of sort of online decision making, or really there's not any online decision making on those vehicles. Um, 
in recent years, there's been a lot of development on sort of higher level um, vehicles that can actually make decisions on the fly to do surveys like um, for coral reefs, for example, or one of the areas I have worked in, um, or inspection of undersea um, structures like, uh, you know, oil rigs or various things. There's a lot of interest in aquaculture at the moment. Um, so a lot of that goes into both kind of sensors used for um, those vehicles, but also algorithms for autonomy. So doing stuff like, um, well, simultaneous localization and mapping is a way to combine your sensor inputs from your vehicle and build up a map of your environment and simultaneously navigate in the environment. Um, it's really well developed in terrestrial robotics, but the marine environment presents a whole other set of challenges, which I could talk about forever, but I won't. Um, yeah, so there's a lot. So it's pretty challenging cool. in terrestrial too. It is, but level. you have a lot more. Um, as soon as you lose GPS, everything gets exponentially harder. So that's one of the wonderful things about underwater is you don't have GPS, so you don't have easy absolute positioning. Nope. Speaking of that, zero four five zero one five. <laughs> what would we like? <laughs> Speaking of guess guessing, um. <laughs> navigating. Yeah, that wasn't a very interesting sonar target. Uh, uh, we can continue on our 015. Roger. Bridge nav. We'll follow this back towards Sargus. Uh, two zero meters bearing 015, please. I think we can uh, make point two here. You want? With the ship? Yeah. We've been going point two. Have we? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, had, I had decimal one five stuck in my reptile brain. Ah, uh, yeah. Reason. I mean, if, if there's no like crazy steep terrain, I guess you could even bump it higher if you feel comfortable with that. What do you think? Yeah, the most I've seen is these little shelves here. They're enticing at first, but I'm bored now, so if you want to go <laughs> faster, we can. <laughs> you want to bump it up to 0 0.3? Sure. Bridge now. Can we increase speed to 0 0.3 knots, please? Hitting tilt up, tilt up. Zoom in there, Tammy. I'm going to turn the porch light on too. It's probably going to blast you. Okay. Nice shrimp, Nomadocarcinus. Small uh, individual. 
Well, at least something in that family, no matter Carcinidae, long legs. Usually you find them on sediment. Really hurting for us to zoom in on, aren't we? <laughs> no, I was wanting to look at the rock there. Maybe uh, thought yeah. maybe we could break a piece off, but I don't think so. It, sometimes as, if it's overhanging and it looks you know, like there's layers there, it's stratified, you can but it looks pretty solid. We're just completing okay. a ship move. Any reason to stay here? Nope. We'll keep going. Nope. nope. Keep on moving. Moving. Gotta find those rocks. Bridge nav. Let's do a five zero meters bearing zero one five. So soft. I was going to say, even the sponges don't like it, but then once in a while you see one of those. Mm -hmm. But just that one species. Yeah. yeah. Typical for this depth. Hey, anything uh, right here look yeah. doable? Or Doesn't look like it. All right. And we can try it, and never know until you try it. No, I trust you. I it Gotta try, though. Sometimes. We do have to try it. The sediment fills in any spots and makes them look like they're loose. Yeah, let's keep on going upslope. Jordan, we have a question that I want to give to you. Can you explain the difference between monument and sanctuary and refuge? Uh, for like, so refuge is sort of like a protected land area. Um, usually they protect things like, well, they can also protect sea life as well, but they protect a lot of bird colonies, plant life. Uh, so out here in the Pacific Rim Island Marine National Monuments, we have, uh, I believe there's seven different wildlife refuges, which are, you know, make up different bodies of islands or atolls or even reefs. Um, and the protection of that refuge extends 12 miles uh, past the shoreline. Uh, whereas when you talk about these marine national monuments, they're talking more about the protections of uh, the bodies of water that surround these refuges. So a lot of that gets co-managed in partnership with agencies like NOAA. Uh, for a lot of the monitoring of the sea lives. But one thing you have to remember is a lot of what happens within the refuges and on land and within these shallow reefs also will have an effect down in these deeper areas of the uh, monuments as well. That makes sense. Thank you. Sanctuaries are uh, have to be established through Congress, is that right? I believe, yeah, I think that so there is a different way that each thing is established. Um, I believe, like as far as the monuments, the president has yep. the right to establish this as a monument. Something you want to look at, Steve? Yeah, just a quick snap. You can uh, do a quick zoom there, Tim. Oh, 
Looks like a colonized stalk of some type. Uh, looks like it's hydroids mostly. Tough to tell what its original. Uh, looks like it was probably a crinoid based on the texture of the lower part of the stalk where it connects to the rock. It looks like it's these uh, stalk ossicles that uh, crinoids have in there. Actually, it might be part of a crinoid still living on there. See okay. a little bit of star shape at the end. Sea lily. Can we zoom out and hike back uh, a little bit to show at least waypoint three, maybe, or four? Roger. Okay. All right, thanks. All set. Are you getting what you need here, Steve? What? Somebody say something? Yeah, are you getting what you need from the map? Yeah. I didn't realize you had changed out with Samantha. I was <laughs> uh, in there. I was like, time. where's that voice coming from? <laughs> Who is this person? <laughs> it's just me. Okay, that's good. Thanks. Sponge talk with hydroids, looks like. Should we zoom in a little bit tighter on the stock? Sure. Go ahead. Oh, they actually look like uh, stoloniferous corals. So it's a type of octocoral. Stoloniferous octocoral. Um, it's very tough to tell with these. I, I know something like this has been sampled before in this region, so I'm not going to disturb it. But um, yeah, we sampled something like this in 2019 on the Nautilus as well, on the same kind of stock, in fact. Still one friend. So each one of those is a little coral. Yeah, it's a colony. And each of the polyps is connected by a kind of a fleshy stolen uh, but the skeleton, the, the, that, that stalk is actually sponge okay. in nature. Spongy. Oh. Have we been happy with this pace, science and pilots? Yeah. We're happy here. Yeah, you can get right another move. There was a black coral down there. If uh, Down. Right, kind of right, right where you t left off is uh, right here, just above where that stalk was. If you don't mind giving a quick pass on that. I don't know why. Antonella doesn't mind hitting the cliff. Hmm? This guy here, Steve? Yeah, that's right. Wow, I totally missed that. They uh, they develop super secret camouflage so that humans can't see them way down deer here in the deep sea. Oh, it's so soft. Might be able to get a quick zoom there to me before I wreck it. Yep. So this is a black coral, probably in the genus Alternatopathies. One that's been studied uh, from the Central Pacific or from the Pacific more broadly in recent years. But it's the most, I'd say the most substantial coral colony we've seen so far. Dan, we're moving close to that wall. Yeah, we are. What's the right, little critter next to it? One so that it looks like a brittle there, star. Yeah. You can zoom in. That's good. Yeah, you can see kind of alternating branches coming off the main mm. main axis. Alternatopathies. And the schizopathidae right, family. One more time. I can't hold it still. I gotta run. <coughs> We're gonna. <laughs> yep. Whenever you gotta okay. go. We're in a tight spot. Coming up. 
right there. Thank so, you. Now Argus and her can look for rocks. <laughs> yeah, we're in single <laughs> digits. Planned, right? Single yeah. digits. <laughs> Double the right. deal. Right. Pull up. Pull up. Force multiplier. <laughs> <laughs> Although I do see a patch of rocks in Argus. <laughs> Possibly. It's scaring me. Oh. Yeah. Look at that. Wow. Yeah, that's rising fast. Yeah, it is. I'd look over. Well, this. Uh, We'll hold the ship here for a minute. Okay. So we uh I'm getting above it. Okay, I'm above the closest bit. Right there. Back in the double digits. <laughs> but anyway, it's still gonna swing in for a while, so Yeah. It's a cool feature. All right. Uh, well, it's okay. stuck up on us. Outside of their danger Let's do a zone. 20 meter move south. I thought these were going to be south. loose rocks Roger. over here, but I'm getting less pretty and less tough. optimistic. They look pretty attached. Yeah. Could we step 20 meters bearing 180? Thank you. So we have some Bersinged sea stars here, maybe a sea cucumber, sea pens. Uh, there might be a sea star on the wall over there. If you look straight down, it'll be less scary. It's a nice, crusty, botryoidal <laughs> rock. It's definitely uh, that is back in the exactly zone. the type of rock we need for yeah. some of the crust analyses we're working on. I'll but keep coming up here. Uh, yeah, okay. Very difficult to break off. Oh yeah! Wow, look at that coral colony there. I have not been turning on the tilt motor. That almost blends in. You can turn it on. Okay. What are the K's? Um, it was not noted. I'll turn it on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, Is that, uh, that room won't... Ooh. Come on, you can do it. Oh my gosh. It's a new one it's for a me. It's a tongue twister. Yeah. <laughs> okay, tell me. It's a bit of a tongue twister. What's the common name? Um, I don't think it has one, sadly. The species itself doesn't have a common Four name, K. but uh, it belongs to the family of golden corals. Uh, this is called Remula gorgia. 2K. Right here. And uh, it's kind of characteristic of these depths and these types of habitats. Uh, we found extensively in and around the Hawaiian Islands. Um, but definitely one of the deeper dwelling Chrysogorgids. Hey. It may be Romulogorgia militaris, um, which is actually uh, named militaris because if you were to look at the polyps when they're all closed up along the branches, that kind of looks like soldiers lined up in a row. Ooh. So that's how it got its name. Okay, Tammy, should be good for and polyps in there. Finally. But there is a, there are other species. This one was just recently revised. Um, used to belong to a genus called Pleurogorgia. It's really pretty. Reminds me yep. of Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, just a just a. Good image, got it? Yeah, I got a couple of images. I think we're ready to go. Right there. This is going to be probably commonly observed uh, over the next few hundred meters of our dive depth range. It's a good sign. We've seen two new species in the next last 10 minutes or so. You're good there. 
Do I touch it? It's yeah, very I'll, I'll move him up a bit. Uh, very... We're moving that ship. Very surprising. South, so it pull it away Could indicate cluster. that this is a lot of crust build up in this area. Do you think that's a circle? Or a, of course it's a circle, but a rock you can get? <laughs> Probably not a good place to perch not, not immediately jumping out at me. Anything here? Well, we're past it now. Yeah. No, I, I saw the circle that you circled. Circle that you circled. The circle I circled. <laughs> yeah. Uh, some more sea pens. Another Chrysogorgia colony here. So the, you know, right the, this area is, might be getting a little bit better current, which is why Come we're having five. kind of scoured, crusty surfaces, uh, and also more suspension feeders. Um, That's good. It's a good sign, but maybe not for the rocks, but we're going to keep looking. You want to zoom on this guy, Steve? Uh, yeah, if you have time. Sure. You do. Uh, perfect there. Uh, which one? Top one or bottom one? Uh, can you do both quickly? Yeah. We're actually moving the ship away from the wall, so... Yeah, I don't actually know what that one on the lower left was. Maybe it's just a smaller colony of this one in the upper right. Ship is uh, stationary for the time being, so yeah, we've got time. Argus should be getting further away. Roger. They're likely the same. Okay, Tammy, try that. Do a quick zoom and then uh, gonna head off to dinner. They may be the same. I'm not quite sure. So at least we get a good image of them. Uh, each of them it should 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 suffice. I don't know if that qualifies as a good image, but you want yeah. to go wide. Good enough. Yeah. For the circumstances, yeah. Go for it. <laughs> good. Zoom on that one. Yeah. I can hold still. Hi everyone, this is Megan uh, stepping in for Steve for dinner Hi, relief. Duster, duster. Hi, Hello. Feeding the corals. Still looking for rocks, I see. Still looking for rocks. Raj. Okay, you want to zoom out on Argus so I can see where I am? Where are we going to go next? Where are we going to go next? Are we ready to cruise? Yeah, let's keep moving. No, no, let me get out up to the north of Argus there. Okay. Uh, according to my smear, I'm to the left of Argus, which makes sense, which is the way Argus is looking. Uh, we have been stepping, well, we just came back south at 180, um, but we had been going to 015. Uh, hold on, let's keep an eye on her for now. Need to figure out what to look at next. We're gonna go on the right side of the uh, rocks there. 
Yeah, along that um, kind of ledge. I don't know if the uh, DVL is accurate or not. I don't think it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Black coral over there. <laughs> uh, it looks like it has drifted off a bit. You can, uh, you can rehome it if you want. Yeah, you good? Yep. All right. So we're looking for a rock to break off, Kylie. Okay. All right, DVL is reset. Uh, Roger. I think that's where we are. Do you want to zoom on this one, Megan? Or yeah, let's do it. Okay, go ahead. Is a gorgid. Is that a crab or an anemone? It looks like it's in there. Can't tell if we're moving or it's moving. It looks like it's moving. I think it's like some kind of crab. A crab, yeah. Is that a, a carrier squat crab? Lobster? Squat lobster. Probably it looks kind of like the one that had an, an anemone on its back. It's got I think that's a squat lobster. Yeah. It looks squat lobster. Oh yeah, now I see it. Now I see the arms. Dropped whatever he had. I think we're good on that. Thank you. Okay. I think we can move the ship now. All right, Raj. Let's do uh, just a 20 meter bump this time. Sounds good. Pretty chance. Could we step to zero meters bearing zero one five? Zoom in there for a minute, Tammy. On the crab or the rock? The ledge. Uh, the, the ledge. Shrimp. Okay. You think That's we could good. break something like that off? Doesn't looks pretty solid. Possible. Want to try it? Got sure. Time. Yeah, we can try it. Let's do it. Do you think that's you want loose right Sorry. there? I should have asked. No, um, that just to the left of the circle you do, we're going to try and Yeah, but I was wondering if that also could put in. Or it looks pretty. You mean this? Yeah. Yeah. Try and break that off. Let me know when you're good for... Oh, I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'm good to turn craft valve on? Yep. Raj, coming on. Is your blue lights on? It is on. My my blue light's on. Roger. Yeah. Okay, Raj. You're good to go. Okay. Weird. Destruction. Destruction coming up. You want to zoom out just a bit for Tammy? Sure. We're up tight against the rock, so I can move this over if you want. That little nub that's sticking out. That 4K is uh, distracting. <laughs> it helps you with your parallax area, though. The lower this guy or the um, higher one? Either one. Well, I'd say the higher one, but... The higher one looks easier. It was also looks like it has a little something on it. Yeah.
How do I get my wrist to go? Zoom out some more, Tammy. I want my wrist to go like right, out gotta, that way. You got to pitch up. Pitch See up. how you pitch all the way down. So tuck your arm back in a little. Like that. Right, go like this. Okay. Yeah. I'd pitch up some more. Wait, I'm not full of um Pitch up some more. There you go. Okay. Bring the yaw to the right just a little. Yeah, it's looking like a angle that we want. Yeah. It's weird. I don't know what camera to look at. There's <laughs> three, and then one of them feels like it's lying at all times. Yeah, not look at all three. Oh, God. I know. All right. All right. I'm going to commit to one. Commit. It's just under your jaws there. That's the angle you want. Probably have to get a bigger bait though. To get a bigger bait and then kind of try and roll it up. Okay. Something like that. I'll either break the rock or the manipulator. Raj, <laughs> let's see who's stronger. Me or the earth. Give it. Just need a little piece. Nar. We can go for another 20, Sam. Or at our 20 west? Oh. Uh, no, I think we're going 015 again. Mm. Oh, are we not stopping here for a sample? Uh, we're about done with the sample. Yeah, I don't, I don't think this is going to work. No. So we can keep moving. Roger. We that was uh, we have been moving the whole time. We're just oh sure. We I just, just came to the end there. We had pennies in our bridge now. Sample bank. We did. Have uh, two zero meters bearing zero okay. one five. Okay, nice try. It's very entertaining to watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, video swapping out. Roger. Roger. Raj. What's going on? Elbow up. Elbow up, Raj. Oops, that's weird. Why is that? Pitch up too. There, there we go. go. Okay, there we go. Halted. Roger. Um, valve off first, yeah. Yeah, I leave the blue light on. You got it. I've had to retrain myself. I, both Robert and I have turned it off once, and it's like, oh, turn it off, turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Every time me and Gabby go to use it, we're like, this first, then that, right? I'm like, out loud cues, and we we'll probably won't mess it up if we both do that. Yeah, it's a pretty bush, bush fix we did there. We basically had to hotwire our manipulator. To That's yeah. what we heard. <laughs> It works. Ship move underway. Roger. Zero one five. Yep. This is the first time we've officially been in the box the whole shift. In the box? Box? Yeah, we've been all over the place. This box? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, what box? Bio box? Well, you know, <laughs> the box, well, like, you it, know. It depends on what scale your box is. <laughs> <laughs> Argus on the right side of her, Kirk looking up the hill, headed in the right direction. Still looking for a rock. Jones and for a rock. Got a question coming in. Um, how feasible is it to add some sort of rock breaker to Herc so that you could sample larger rocks or boulders? Is that a thing? We have one. Yeah. 
takes three people to put it on the vehicle. How does it work? It's like a jackhammer. I haven't used it. It's never been on one of my crew, one of my expeditions. It didn't work. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Roger. <laughs> so picture uh, like if you put a jackhammer on the side of your boat and pulled up to the dock and turned it on. <laughs> what do you think would happen? Boing. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't be next to the dock anymore. But Noted. Just shoot yourself off into the ether. <laughs> but we also had tested one that had like it looked like a had a bunch of spider legs that the would claw. Like, grab onto the rock and then try to break it so that it wouldn't push the vehicle back. That's yeah. cool. I don't know how how that went. I think it didn't really work fully either. I mean, it's not on the vehicle, right? <laughs> that, that's certainly true. But it sounds cool though. Like it really looked cool. Yeah. yeah, it looks like a sea spider. It looks like oh definitely, uh, yeah, bio-inspired robotics. I like that stuff. That biomechanics. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of cool stuff. It's a nice idea, though. I wonder if. It'll be refined in the future. Another question coming up. What about a rock saw? Well, we same yeah. sort of issue, um, I think. Yeah. Jason <laughs> has one. Oh, Jason has one. Band saw, yeah. yeah. Mm. They rescued Herc with it. That's awesome. But what they typically use is uh, they uh, drill in and take a core. So they have a specialized skid that goes underneath the vehicle and mm. the vehicle comes up and lands and a little shrimp. basically drills a hole in the rock and gets a core sample. Got lots of ROV questions coming in. Are the joints electrical or hydraulically controlled on the arms? They are hydraulically controlled with electrical feedback. So they're, the mouthful is... Oh. Uh, Ooh, what is this are we a, up an enemy? On? Looks like an anemone. Can we get a zoom on that? Yeah. Wow. How big is this guy? You want lasers on? Looks like lasers it's are on. Yes, about maybe 25 about centimeters. 20 centimeters. Raj, I just can't see them. 25. They're right, below it. They're right on top of it now. There's another brittle star uh, sediment angel. Oh uh, yeah. Bottom oh. left. Sediment angels. <laughs> That's number two. All right. Steve is back. Have a nice watch, everyone. Thanks. <laughs> Who's over there in video now? Yeah. What'd you say? Ryan? Yeah. Oh, I didn't hear you. Oh. Are you looking at Ryan in video? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Ryan. Wasn't sure who was there. Yeah, you can zoom in a little bit there, right? That's good, thanks. Sometimes when we look at these things, I think they're beautiful and inspirational. And then I also see like inspiration for monsters and sci-fi at the same time. <laughs> it goes both thinking. ways. Yeah. They kind of remind me of those little overlays that you can put on helmets. And a lot of like young kids have them on the ski slopes. Just crazy hair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all set here? Yeah, we're slowly trekking along up the uh, feature here. You got all those rocks, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Aww. All 20 of them. Too soon. Too soon. Too soon. Welcome back, Steve. <laughs> okay. You can it's an interesting right. Thanks. color band, though. Yeah. yeah. What is that alteration there? Hmm. Oh, maybe the anemone moved. Wait, is that a thing? That actually can happen, yeah. Made a, a track? Er, er, yeah. Really? That, that's probably what happened. Uh, the anemone <laughs> kind of slid. This isn't an anemone track? Okay, <laughs> let me make a highlight on that situation. It, it's actually, yeah, they can move, uh, you know, small distances. Some of them, like we saw the other day, can pop off completely uh, and swim. I mean, yeah, we shouldn't be surprised Wild. by that. The but that's really large. Was swimming. You have to imagine this must be a pretty old creature to have that effect on, on the crust, maybe, or 
maybe it's something it produces is you know corrosive to the crust and so it yeah. Yeah, exposes kind of the, in the weathering process yep. bio bio weathering <laughs> is that a new thing bio hey, i think that's yeah, a thing that is yeah a thing. It is. can i collaborate with you on that paper mm -hmm. yeah bio yeah. weathering of everyone's on anemones <laughs> i mean yeah that's like a thing yeah. in the intertidal with like limpets who carve out uh kind of holes in rocks and yeah, yeah. i like that what Done. Was, what was that anemone called? Relicanthus. Relicanthus, yes. The ancient you name. look at this one, Steve? Uh, what do you got there? Down uh, below? No, I have no idea what it is. No, it looks like a sp some debris or s some sponge Maybe debris. A dead sponge. Uh, yeah. Not a highlight. <laughs> not, no, not a highlight on that one. Not a, not a highlight. I did highlight the anemone track. That's kind of cool. It does give you some idea, you know, maybe in these lower flow environments, animals might, might have to adjust uh, and be fluid um, in their positioning to uh, achieve maximum potential for feeding. Uh, it's not all that unusual. If the currents, for example, are squirrely and light, they might uh, have to adjust themselves to What's Basically, and the mac get the maximum uh, efficiency out of their feeding. I wonder okay. what that threshold is because I imagine there's an energy cost associated with moving. Of course. <coughs> so, Steve, what is a sea pen? Oh yeah, sea pen. It's a type of octocoral. Uh, they're really um, most of them are well suited for sediment dwelling, but there's some of them uh, that live in hard substrates, but type of coral do you want to go look at it or uh we've looked at that one quite a bit right. a few times so far oh another star sediment yes, star this I've is seen the third one more of i've been marking them down <laughs> i'm hoping we can get That's to 10 cool. by the end of our watch be great <laughs> well. it almost looks like a falling star it has the shape and, and then, then it, the little track yeah, it's kind of cute <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep, keep getting questions about this uh, a, so a solution to get these rocks off. Have we ever tried an ultra high pressure water cutter? Mm. <laughs> oh, you mean like the ones you pick up Home, home Depot? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No problem. But we'll oh. put one for a pickup when we get I'll, back. I'll ask Steve this question because I can't answer it. Hey, is there anything in here that might be a candidate? Could be. This might be a lava tube, no? Something. Maybe. No. You wanna it all looks like throwing out geology if words. You want and to, uh, to poke it, that's good by me. Yeah, let's do that. Let's Eventually, see. if I throw out enough geology words, I might be right. <laughs> <laughs> Would you call that a lava tube or something? And we're going to yes, do a. Yes, that is what he said. Lava it's tube, quite possible, perhaps. Yes. And we're going to do a uh, stop and poke. Yes. Pause and poke. Pause and poke. Thank you. Pause yeah. and poke. Pause hover, and poke. hover. I think it might be a poke lava tube just because it has poke. this nice overhang over it. Like and that's this. where we found the good rock last time, right? Oh, yeah. That's where we got, I think, my best sample. You want to uh, get the minute out? Still very yeah. curious right about that super that. heavy one from oh, the last dive. Well, I will be cutting open rocks right after uh, Jordan gets back. Uh, so we have a rock Can saw? you take a picture for me? No, we don't. I say that, but I mean, I'm just going to take the chisel and the and the hammer. Right and uh, looks like he's back, so I will get on that. You don't want to stay here for this moment? This could be the moment. The moment. This could be the rock. I don't think this is I, going yeah, to be Yeah, I don't think this is going to be the moment. This could be the, <laughs> it should be the moment. Be it's a birthday moment. I'll be pleasantly surprised if it, it is. This one? Oh, yeah, just so you know, viewers, if you were with Amber on the watch before, she does have a happy birthday hat on now. Yay, happy birthday, Amber. Oh. We're not in frame yet. Nope. What about to the right? There's like a couple. Like on Steve, if you have a bonus. Like off the frame, you mean? Yeah. Like this? Yeah, down there, down maybe. There. I don't know. It could be helpful, too. But. I have a request for you to say the scientific name of the long uh, tentacled anemone again and perhaps spell it I so that the they can look it up. Why am I? Yeah. Um, so. It, the genus name is Relicanthus. Sorry. 
Uh, so, as in relic, R E L I C, Anthus, A N T H U S. Right. And there, there's a, there's at least one species, but we're not no sure powerful. if you know these are actually the same species. Manipulator. Uh, that's okay. been described okay. from actually from uh, right. uh, from areas around hydrothermal vents, not hydrothermal vents themselves, but you know from areas. Uh, adjacent to uh, active venting they've been found. Interesting fact from uh, Jeremy Horowitz in the science chat, Relicanthus lineage is about 500 million years old or older based on some unpublished data. Well, well secure. that's old. You uh, tilt up a little on the heart. Yeah, so yeah. probably one of the very earliest uh, metazoans. I don't know if this is, I can't decide if this site is exciting because it has so much cr like really apparent crust or... It'd be exciting if we could grab a piece, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Bridge now. This is not the first time that I've been foiled by giant mountains. <laughs> Uh, been on a few expeditions where we tried to sample literally just about every rock uh, we could and if it was stuck to the side of the seamount it was probably due to crust um, but we've resorted to even things like ramming the seafloor with the oh. vehicle to just see if we can dislodge anything was that successful no of course not. <laughs> <laughs> caused much much consternation amongst the engineers but they were willing to do it You never know if you don't try. Exactly. Science. Take risks. Could you install like a chisel arm on her? We do have a pry bar or two down there in the hangar. Yeah, we do. One of our viewers say sediments must be a uh, a nightmare to try and cut open tiny little sediments, <laughs> little forams. Yeah. They're really cool to look at under a microscope, though. But people who work with them, you need to count almost about a thousand of them for one sample for it to be considered like good data or something along those lines. Oh. So they spend hours just counting them using uh, a paintbrush with a single hair on it to kind of separate them out. Oh, we do the same thing for coral sclerites. Use a paintbrush with eyelashes from a pig. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> Is there any special reason for that? Nope, it's probably cheaper. Just because? Yeah. Ugh. Pig's eyelashes. Very rigid, but you know, still have that ability to move small, mm -hmm. you know, things that are fractions of a millimeter. Come up. You're full of fun facts today, Steve. <laughs> I didn't know. You see, I didn't see that was a fun fact. I thought it was like, oh, that's a tool. It's like, oh, I have a wrench. I've got a paintbrush with. <laughs> I can't say it again. <laughs> are forearms benthic or platonic? Pla planktonic or both? Both. Both. Yeah. You have uh, xenophyophores that live in the benthos. There are also other benthic forams that live uh, in the sediments. And you have ones that live in the water column. They're everywhere. Any of these small rocks, maybe? Yeah, not, or not that one just off to the right. Not seeing any candidates. Uh, looks like it's probably attached. But maybe. Some of the ones there might be, might be loose. You know, poke those, see those three or four there that are... Sure, pause and poke. Could have rolled down the hill. The ship is just finishing a move, so we okay. can uh, use this time to catch up.
even though it's not uh, in place, as they say. Maybe it's something. Yeah. to a <laughs> running choke. This viewer is asking if this area has ever been videoed before, if we're the first ever to see these rocks and critters with our own eyes. I think the answer is yes. This is the first time. This is an um, unexplored region of seafloor that was recently mapped by Nautilus, meaning recently in the last day or so. And so you are seeing it for the first time with us. The world is seeing it for the first time. Oh, is that a ledge? Oh, could be. It looks like a drop off. Maybe we should go the other way with the ship. Let's see what it is first. Eh. Pretty smooth. Maybe not. It's a mirage. Almost looks like footprints on the seafloor. Yeah. So somebody was here already and took all the rocks. I just <laughs> told them we were the first ones here. Nobody's been Allegedly. here before. <laughs> Do you think that was the iris or the cathex? Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. Thanks. There's a crack up ahead. What are you doing, Swap? Sponge? Yeah, it looks like another sponge. Last sponge. Something tall on the right side of the ledge. Oh yeah, looks like a large bamboo coral. Maybe another something or other next to it. Maybe an older bamboo coral that's been consumed. We want to push in there a bit. Maybe. Good things. Tough to tell what it could have been. Could have been one of the bam bamboo corals. All right. Moving on. That is not the sparse, sparse branch we're looking for. I'm not the only one that saw footprints. You know, viewers, are those footprints look like the elusive sea squatch. <laughs> 
That's a new one. Haven't seen that one yet. Yeah. Bridge now. Two zero meters, zero one five. A pretty steep slope here, huh? Yeah. Incredible. Incredible. There's more of these, uh, some kind of sand channels or something like that. So maybe there's some more where all the rocks went. Yeah, verti <laughs> yeah. <laughs> vertical terrain coming up. Sometimes there's a pile of rocks at the bottom of these some of these cliffs. Sometimes. Well, Alternatopathies, black coral. What do you think about this one, front row? Take the corals on the Yeah, light. let's try it. Second thought, I take it back, but you could still try if you want to. No, yeah, I think, I think it's probably going to be attached. Yep. Yeah. That's a pretty uh, deep trap there. It's actually just one long beaked whale scour. You think? No. Wow. I think that's a, a rock. No, that that's definitely on. like a rock channel. <laughs> <laughs> fall down right there. Oh, a couple of people just tuning in wanting to know they what they all decided doing. to fall down slope before we got here. <laughs> Maybe we should have started that dive a little bit deeper. So for those of you just joining us on the website, um, welcome as we explore the western ridge of an unnamed seamount. Um, we're going to go along a 3.5 kilometer transect upslope. <laughs> dive started at approximately 2,800 meters. We're going to go up to the summit. Um, that's the plan, which is at approximately 1,500 meters. We're hoping to collect volcanic rock material that's important for understanding the geological history of this seamount and its contribution to the broader formation history of the Line Islands region that we're in right now. So it's kind of one of, that's what we're poking around for. We're looking for some good, good rock samples to help us answer those questions. Additionally, we hope to collect iron manganese crusts from this site that will help better inform crust geochemistry across these deep depths. Can you put the, put the DSC in there where we left? It should be... Uh, oh, wait, we can't do we that. We can't, but I can put it here. Yeah, you want to okay. put the nav up there? Yep. That'd be great. I don't know if they're taking... Are you guys taking any pictures at all? Or? We are, yep. I can put it back up there, Dan, if you want, if you prefer. Uh, yeah, we had it up there before. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be sweet. You Wait, want? How do you want you? that? Oh. Okay. I think Wait. she had it on. Yeah, uh, I have PC. to do it over here first, okay. and I'll let you know. She had it on PC two last time. Bridge gotcha. now. Do I have control over that, Tammy? Or uh, you, have you to do will. It? You can put PC two up there two now. Two zero and I'll meters one. Oh, okay. Cool. Z or zero one five. Uh, PC two. Yeah, it will be there shortly. Okay. And you're looking for the still cam, right, Dan? Correct. Thank you. Yeah. In addition to the geology, we are also hoping to make observations of habitat forming biology like deep water corals and sponges. There is a something coral right here. Yeah, right. Speaking of biology, let's zoom in.
Let's see. Where, Whenever you're ready to. Yeah, 26. So this is first observation for this dive, I think. This is a primnoid octocoral. Probably in the genus Norella. Although it could change if we get a bit closer look. Yeah, yeah, find a perch here. Well, it's on a rock pen up there. Too. Find a perch without dust on it. I don't know if that's possible. Okay. Might be able to zoom in there. I got it in the right zoomable place this time. There we go. It's still hark. That was a brief zoom. I can try one more time. That's a, uh, that's okay. Can you actually zoom on this thing here? Right where your lasers are now? Sure. Good at this, Steve. I feel like you should make a wor Where's Waldo book, but it's like Where's the Coral? <laughs> okay, let me turn amongst that. Amongst the rocks. I'll settle for Where's the Loose Rocks right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this looks like one of those bamboo corals that we've been seeing. Very small colony. Unbranched. The sediment's very fluffy around here. You can actually see some of the small foraminifer granules, but there's all this phytodetritus as well. Marine snow. Oh, we just had a question about the sediment. Fuzzy, yeah. So there you have, you can see the forams and the detritus from marine snow in this particular area. It might be hard to see on, yeah. It, it, it's easier to see here, but it might be hard to see the individual foram gran grains uh, on YouTube or wherever our folks are tuning, tuning in from. Okay. All right, thanks, all set there. Roger. Continue uh, on. Yeah. yeah, off the side of to the to your starboard. Yeah, I see it. Might be something. Could be. Just. Do we want to ship move east or just continue on? But uh, we you can, can lateral. We can continue on. Bridge now. Zero one five. Two zero meters zero one five. While we move over there, a question coming in. How long does it generally take for samples to reach their final storage location after being collected on one of our dives? From the moment we reach the dock, uh, it depends, but it's usually within 30 days to two months or so at the Museum of Comparative Zoology, um, depending on how much lead time they have before the samples arrive. They can often create the entries for catalog samples um, in their collections before the samples arrive, and then um, they can be ready for request uh, up to, I would say, a few months after they're, they've been initially collected. So what about the rock repository? Uh, yeah, for the rock repository at URI, um, I guess it depends. So before coming on this cruise, we had just recently received a shipment from Nautilus um, with a bunch of rocks from a lot of the cruises last season. So some of the stuff had been sitting around waiting, you know, to be shipped out um, for a couple months. Um, others had just been collected in December and then we got them in like late January, early February, something like that. Um, so then we have to go through all the boxes and cut everything open, describe it, uh, pop it in the database. So it takes a couple months 
for it to be readily available to be shipped out uh, for people who want to sample it. What do you think about those rocks uh, that were circled? Yeah, we could give them a poke here. They always look better from high above, don't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then when we get in, it's like, mm, I don't know. They're pretty attached. Well, I mean, if that brownish stuff is like I was weathering, it could be. Change. It, yeah, if that's weathering, it could, the rocks could be weaker and more easily to break off. But then we have the weathering deal with you want to try and poke them too Th those on the bottom i don't think we need to uh, what do you nah, yeah, i think they're gonna think be so. hard i'm looking i've been looking for a suspect to break off to what about the ones if you look in argus kind of straight forward it looks like there's a little cluster did you already look at those no, yeah no, i, I did see that off to the side <laughs> that's an op that's an option How hard do you think that stuff is? Friable at all? Or so far, it's been pretty hard. I don't know. Looks to be pretty hard, at least from my untrained eye. Yeah. But it's pretty crusty. It does. You try and ram it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's uh, there's not many things you can do. Can't take the mountain with you. Mountain's gonna come down on us here. <laughs> Usually, when we're planning dives, we try to pick s steeper slopes because they're. They're, they're not usually all steep all the time. There's usually some sort of uh, kind of platforms that ap may appear in the wall uh, where you might get loose rocks collecting. But once in a while, you get these gems like this one where it's just solid. All of the rocks have uh, fallen to the bottom. Yeah. We just completed a ship move. Any, anything off to the right over there? Was that... Or is that a... Up to the right. Yeah, I'm seeing these kind of patches, but they might just be. Just whatever's poking yeah, through, whatever's, yeah. yeah. I want to bleed. I need to get back up the hill here. Yeah. Go check the next target. At least we got lots of targets to go look at. Mm -hmm. I love these little, uh, like it started a slide or something that makes these troughs. Uh, something like that. Another Remulagorgia colony. It's a type of golden coral. Big sponge there too. Below us. Oh yeah. It's pretty sweet. Where's Psycho the sponge? Psychocalyx. Oh, Stock in the far right corner sponge. there. Yeah. Wait, have we seen that guy before? <laughs> that exact one. A little coral under it too, some stuff under the overhanging rock. Or 
Yeah, yeah, there's a couple different corals and then there's a sea cucumber also. It's so steep, even the sea cucumbers don't like the sediment slope, they just prefer the verticals. Yep, nice. Not, not a tremendous diversity here. A lot of these sacrocalyx sponges, Chrysogorchia, Romulogorchia, um, bamboo is a couple different species so far. Good for another move? No. No. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was just trying to figure out what is going on, but she's looking back down the hill at me. Ah. Oh, I see. Uh, is that all right, Dan? Yeah. Okay. You're trying to Sorry, get ahead, though, told I'll, you. I'll just have to catch up. No, it took me a minute to figure it out. I had to do a double take. Argus is jumping around a lot on the FG for some reason, too. Yeah. Could be the giant cliff we're on. Could be. <laughs> 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 Might could. Do you want to tight him this guy, Steve? Or? No, we got a good one um, kind of right before the dinner break. So right. move on. It's got a bunch of anemones, though, which is kind of neat, but... I don't think we need to do any more imaging of this. It's a fairly widespread species in the Pacific. You can find it as far north as the musicians' sea mounds, as far south as maybe American Samoa, out to Wake Island uh, in the west. So it's a uh, it's widespread species in the Pacific. Primarily at deeper depths, so kind of like where we're at now. Uh, although we we will start to see increased diversity as we approach kind of the 2,000 meter mark. We're about 2,400 right now. I'm wondering if this is kind of, you know, we, we've kind of really left the, the Line Islands Ridge and a lot of you know, seamounts that kind of look like Line Island seamount type habitat with you know big carbonate caps on most of these atolls. Uh, I wonder if this is kind of what we're going to be seeing in the next few days. If it's just uh, these older, possibly older seamounts, maybe over the yeah, they would be older, right? If we go to the northwest, they'd be older. Yeah, yeah. older to the northwest. So maybe older, just lots of crust. Well, I can tell you our viewers are really loving this content. They've never spent so much time looking for rocks before. <laughs> <laughs> it's a brand new experience. We haven't either. <laughs> Not lately. And then another question coming in about how many pounds of pressure can Herc's claw exert when closing? Not very much. A couple <laughs> hundred pounds. Not enough to break off these rocks. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what they were getting at. <laughs> could it potentially break softer rocks? Yeah, it could crush softer rock. It's, uh, I think the spec is uh, it's a couple hundred pounds. But we have the long um, coral cutters on there, so we can't, we don't get as much force with the current jaws we have. It's kind of a trade-off to be able to snip corals, so. All right. We got the long nose pliers on there. It's definitely helpful. Um, coral cutters are really important. Otherwise, uh, you end up making a uh, whole colony collection when you really only need a few centimeters. Yeah. Because it just goes right off. And I've noticed some of them are kind of fibrous. They take a little. Yeah. Uh, Definitely. Turns or. They're really good for prying, though. We can pry it. Uh, we pry too much of them, we, we break them. I miss that. Maybe. Anything Maybe in, here? in here? Maybe, yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed. It's so hard. They all right. kind of look. Gonna poke around in here and see if there's something you can break off. It looks like there's maybe some. Some rubble. Yeah, rubble or just 
Something you can get a good purchase on. A cool little uh, tube thingy there in the bottom it of the It looks so too. promising, and then we zoom in. Oh, you know what that is? What is that? <laughs> For a number of years, like through the entirety of the capstone program, we were baffled by what these things were. Um, so capstone was a, a campaign that went around to a lot of the Pacific monuments from 2015 to 2017 and found, uh, you know, basically the initial explorations. But this thing was always like, what is it? What, what, could be, what could it be? We collected one of them last year from Howland and Baker, or the area around Howland and Baker. And it actually is a worm tube. It's what? a type of worm called a parchment worm. Yeah. Okay, this is super exciting. Tell me more about this. That's about all I know. Tube making worm. <laughs> you zoom in there, Tammy. That's a, yeah. It's a so it's a t it you makes a mucusy sediment too. tube. Okay. Uh, this one actually looks quite alive. You know, it looks pretty fresh. But um, we dissected the tube open, and it was a worm in there. It's Craft it's all. very gelatinous. Right. It doesn't have a very strong body. You're uh, right up, uh, right up but against it's called the cliffs. A parchment like worm. Come yeah. right there, nice and easy. There. How does it um, get its energy? I think it's oh, probably uh, okay. feeding on you know, deposited material. I don't I don't know if it's a predator or not. Its body was very gelatinous, so I'd okay, be surprised away, Tammy. if it was a predator. Could be a filter feeder as well with that tube. Something to consider. So am I going for the one to the right of that tube? Dealer's choice. Looks like something out of that movie, Aliens. Going for the loose one. Not that one. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Pause Not and that hope. one. Oh. <laughs> it's behind door number three. And... Oh? No, just uh, dust. Was that a maybe yes or just dust? No, when they move, you can see the, uh, the dust poof around them. Okay. When we finally make this collection, we're going to have a party. Oh, you got a piece of rock on your jaw. There's already a party downstairs. <laughs> Very true. Uh, oh, sure. oh, it looks like you're getting low pieces. I'm scraping the crust off. <laughs> okay. Right. We need to find a piece we can break. What about where your lasers are? Was that a little hollow? Maybe up to the upper left there. Oh, yeah. A little claw hold. Yeah, we're looking for like a crust somewhere we can get the jaws under and something with cracks around it. Kind of Larry of sticking them in a hole like that because you might Perhaps not get them back. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh -huh. think's in there? <laughs> I don't know, but if it's hard, we yeah. you know, break them off in there, that would be bad. Oh, right, because the snips are on? Yeah. Yeah. Difficult, difficult terrain, but don't worry, it'll be over soon. We'll be at the top of this mountain. <laughs> We will. <laughs> it's going to happen. Well, it might have other problems, but at least we won't have to worry about <laughs> Maybe there's a nice pile of rocks just waiting. Yeah. What about Isn't that <laughs> the lower left there? Somebody was there already and made one of those oh, yeah, it's rock it's mounds. Could be. I did Ooh. see those footprints. Um, question about those worms, the two big worms. Yeah, yeah okay. right, right, right. Yeah. Would they have gills like polychaetes? Yeah, it's, it is a type of polychaete worm, um, mm. so yes. There you go, craft valve. Right there. Bad landing. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Let's learn about parchment worms. Yeah. Oh, okay. come on, it looked so promising. It did, it looked so good, Tammy. I don't think so. 
Okay. Okay. Good try. Fun try. Cracks, rocks all around. None of them to take. <laughs> That's a lot of uh, new growth on that. Oh wait, no, never mind. Those are the feet of the Brzezinget, right? No. Uh, yeah, it looks like yeah. there's re regrowth on some of the, those parts. Oh, is it? Uh, on the bottom? Yeah, it looks like those might be uh, in regrowth, those arms. Oh, that's right, they don't have feet like crinoids. That looks like it lost half its body almost. Yeah, that's the Brzezinget. Huh. Uh, yep. Brzezinget in regrowth. Some of these definitely look See, breakable. You know. Is that what you're going for? Yeah. The, the crust here? See the crust right where the lasers are? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Let me get a little higher there. So. Okay. But if you crust can, valve coming on. If you can stick your jaw under the crust just a little, we've had luck. Uh, let me get up and perch because you'll we'll need some leverage. Yeah. Perch where I'm not oh. whacking the <laughs> still camera. Some of our viewers did a quick Google search parchment worm. Yeah, come out. Just, uh, Apparently, it see. comes up with some interesting okay. pictures. They they're really bizarre animals. Quite a bit of jam here. Okay. So you want to? Right. So you want to try and stick your jaws parallel with the crust there? Um, to the one right. Front of the vehicle or right in front yeah. of the arm? Yep, right where they're touching. Uh, pretty close to get it parallel there. Yeah. I'll come left a bit. Okay. Should be able to get it there. You have to open them and stick one jaw under. There's a little hole there where the. Yeah. 